President Ross, we're, we're live and ready to go. Turn on my microphone. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I'd like to call this open meeting in or to order. This is the United Laguna Woods Mutual Open Meeting. <clears throat> it's the regular open meeting of the United Laguna Woods Mutual Board of Directors of California Nonprofit Mutual Benefit Corporation. It's Tuesday, February 14th, 9.30, and we're in the boardroom. And this is the notice of the meeting and the agenda. Um, so I'm officially calling to order. We do have a quorum, and um, we can begin. Um, so first, I'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'd like to ask Director Blackwell to um, lead it, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there media today? Uh, no, I don't see it. Okay. Okay, first item is the approval of the agenda. Is there any motion to approve the agenda or is anyone against anything on the agenda? Okay, hearing nothing. The, well, we're not member comments yet, so. No, I'm talking about agenda. No, it's not member comments. No, it's, no, no, no. no. Um, so, <laughs> approval of the meeting minutes, item number five. Um, the January 20, 20th, 2023, regular open session, or January 26th, 2023, agenda prep meeting. Any changes to those items? Hearing none, those are approved. And, and so I'd like to report from the chair and uh, about a couple things. Um, so first I wanted to welcome everyone to our meeting and I encourage everyone to come back to our meetings because you're gonna see they are uh, professionally and try to do professionally and, and, and keep to good decorum. And in order to do that, I, I set certain rules uh, and they're based on Robert's rules to try to keep decorum and try to keep from having people personally attacking each other or debating each other or um, any, any, kind of, um, any kind of items that are non-professional, and we like to keep this in a very professional mode and, and, and decorum. And, and so I, I would like to welcome anyone that would like to join us for these meetings. And in addition, um, we have um, two open positions that I wanted to remind you about. Um, one is uh, with our representatives from VMS, um, the deadline for that is February 17th. Um, the selection of a candidate, this would be a United candidate representing United on VMS board is February 23rd. And, 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 and actually the, the selection will be on February 23rd. And, um, and then there's a second opening for a United director position and that's going to go out, or that went out, an e-blast on February 10th, and then again on the 17th. And on March 3rd, they close uh, the, the, um, that, and, and then on March 10th, our board will vote for a new director. 
So that's kind of those two items. I also wanted to um, announce two, two things <coughs> that, that I'm very proud of, and, and these are big accomplishments. And I wanted to um, announce one of the items is that, um, as all of you know, um, our investments were in uh, very, very risky type securities up until recently. And in November, our board voted to change that, change our financial advisor. And um, after hearing from a lot of professional advice from a lot of different people, including our new director, Alison Bach, who helped us with that decision and was led by Azar Ascari. So I wanted to thank them. But basically, we changed our financial advisor, we changed our investments, because we were losing money and we needed to build a recovery plan, which we did. And in November, we started that and we're already well underway with recovering. Um, and within the next two and a half years, we should be fully recovered. So I'm very proud of that accomplishment. And then the second thing, second big accomplishment, which is gonna save us millions of dollars, came up yesterday in an all boards meeting. And this was regarding a building E, which is a project that's been on the budget by GRF for several years. And it's, it's, a, uh, it's a building that is in our, um, um, in our warehouse area. Um, and and um, anyway, the building itself is in, is in very bad condition and needed to be replaced. And so as a result of um, a decision that was made several months ago when it was brought before all the boards to make a decision uh, to go ahead and build a new building, which would have cost $6 million, the decision was made, uh, the, the boards voted against going ahead with it. But what we came up with instead was a plan to, uh, to find new space for the employees in Building E uh, that was that we officially kicked off yesterday and that we, they will be able to rent space from us uh, or from the landlord um, and they will have a place to work that's safe for them. And, um, and then additionally, we hired a consultant that will look around our community and will find available space for them, for the employees to, to relocate. So we identified two plans, and this, this was a result of um, very, good, very good ideas from our board, including from Mary Simon, who came up with some great ideas, and so I wanted to thank her. Um, but basically, um, we, we came up with the plan, and, and third did as well, GRF did as well, and we came together and we initiated that plan yesterday. And, and that plan goes into effect effectively now and it will save millions of dollars because we're not building that building. So we're going to this alternative. So those are two that recently that shows that the boards are really working behind the scenes to save a lot of money and boards and staff together uh, came together and put this put this project in motion. So uh, I wanted to thank all of our board members for contributing to both of those uh, big accomplishments. Because, and I'm looking forward to continuing to come up with other big accomplishments in the future. So working with our board members and staff. So I, um, with that, um, I wanted to continue. Um, so item number seven, is a discussion of social services. Um, do we have someone who can speak to that? <laughs> yes, we have Susan McElnerney, Susan. our division manager. Okay. Hi, how are Hi, you? Susan. I think Paul's gonna put up a PowerPoint. So I'm Susan McInerney. I'm the head of social services, the manager. Um, and thank you for inviting me to come talk a little bit about what we do. I know a lot of you are familiar with what we do, but we have uh, have a couple new programs and projects that we're working on. 
So, like I said, I'm Susan. I've been part of um, Laguna Woods since 2007, on and off. So I've been here for a while as PCM and then switched over. Um, always been part, I started as an intern through when I was getting my graduate degree and, and never left. So I've been here for a while. Our mission in social services is to help Laguna Woods residents maintain independence and enhance their quality of life. That's our mission statement. We keep it generally vague because there's a lot that we do that encompasses that mission. And, and we've been a part of the village since 1972. Um, right now, currently, we have five social workers, which are LCSWs or MSWs. Um, licensed clinical social workers are master's level. Once we're licensed, um, we are therapists, essentially. So we do provide uh, therapy services. <clears throat> we have an internship program that we work with through Cal State Long Beach, um, as well Fullerton and Dominguez Hills, as well as, well as USC. Um, that's typically, we get in, just like how I started, we get an intern that comes in and we um, do a whole year program where they're working with residents under my supervision. <clears throat> we have amazing administrative staff um, that takes the volume of calls and intakes that we have, and then we assign them to social workers. Um, next slide. So this is, in a nutshell, what we do. Um, can you all see that? There's quite a bit. We do a lot of assessments, uh, resources and referrals. We do support groups, uh, educational seminars. We do a lot of long and short-term care planning. And that's essentially looking at where you are, where you want to be, where if you want to age in place, and what is needed to, to get you in that, um, the right direction, including making sure you have your power of attorney in place, that you have a caregiver if needed, that you have the funds to support what you want to do. Um, we do counseling. Um, we are licensed therapists. And we have a social isolation prevention program, which is in conjunction with the Council on Aging. Um, and we have a cognitive health program. Uh, we do a lot of uh, cognitive um, screens, um, screening. People will come in and want to do uh, essentially a mini mental exam to see where they're at. Um, and we're doing the cognitive assessments. And then based on the scoring, we're saying it's time to talk to your doctor, make an appointment with a neurologist. Or if everything's good, people typically come back the next year to see if there's been a change in their cognitive status. Um, and everything we do is confidential. So even though we are incorporated in part of VMS, we do not share this information uh, with other departments, and we do not share it with other residents. Um, Confidentiality is the cornerstone of, of social work. So what we do in our department is stays within our department. Next slide. So how do we connect it? The biggest, um, the most common way that people are connected to our department is through security reports. So every morning, the reports are funneled into our office. Anything of an issue that pertains that might have a social services nature, we are assigning to social workers to follow up. Um, what do you all think the biggest reason that security reports are written for? Falls. Falls are the number one. We have a massive amount of falls in the community. So with that, and, um, we are following up, doing home visits if necessary, making sure the home is safe, making sure the person is safe, and what we need to do to put parameters in. We have a fall prevention program in conjunction with UCI that we work with, too. Um, a lot of people, we get self-referrals, we get family referrals. A lot of referrals from the hospital when people are being discharged. APS, Adult Protective Services, we work very closely with APS. Um, and of course, the Sheriff's Department, the Fire Department. <clears throat> Typically, when people are coming in, meaning uh, Sheriff's Department or Fire Department, if they see something that's concerning within the home, they call us directly and ask us to follow up. Um, and then, of course, other VMS departments. Um, we work very closely when we get referrals, mostly when people go into the homes and they see something that might be off or something that's going on, they call us to ask to, to follow up and see. And that could be as simple as it looks like this person is unable to care for themselves. It could be a hoarding situation. It could be um, just that they seem lonely um, and that they needed some additional support. Um, so these are our stats. Can you all see these? Um, <clears throat> So you can see, we carry a, a, an average of 433 open cases each a month, uh, not each, altogether a month. So we have a very high caseload. 
Um, we're opening in general between 70, you can see, and 100 cases a month. Um, and you can see here how many home visits and office visits we're doing a month. So for not that many of us, we're very busy. Um, our stats are very high for going out into the community. And as you can see from our phone calls, we get an average of about six to 700 calls a month into our department. Um, and then on the bottom is our educational seminars and our support groups. And you can see in this for 2022, we've had about 7,000 resources that we provided and referrals uh, to residents in Laguna Woods. And that could be meal delivery, transportation, um, um, often caregiver services is a big one, physical therapy, things like that. Any questions on this? Mm -hmm. They are advertised, we do it in a bunch of ways. We do it through What's Up in the Village, the Friday e-blast. Um, we do it through um, the newspaper. We do it through um, flyers that we send out through the community and television. Yeah. Uh, next slide. Oh, the foundation. So I know every um, time you all meet someone from the foundation comes, um, it's a big part of what we do um, to help people within the village who are in need of financial assistance. The foundation last year in 2022, we gave well over $100,000 to residents in need. And that was in the form of groceries, respite care for caregiving services, medical bills, um, dental bills. People get really stuck with dental bills, um, um, medical and gas cards for gas for car, um, your car. Um, it, I know every time you guys meet, someone comes from the foundation. What's amazing, though, about the foundation, it's all kept confidential, and we're kind of the corners. We are the gatekeepers, essentially, for um, when residents come to us. We make a report to the foundation. We remove the name. We remove any identifying information. We just put a resident who is 86 years old, who is fall, you know, and we give a little description and narrative, and then the board decides whether they approve it or not. So no names are ever shared between us and the foundation for who is accepting help. And that essentially is because, like we said, it's residents helping residents. So we want people to feel comfortable to come in and say they need help without knowing that it's going to be shared with others. Uh, next slide. This program started last year. It's been an amazing program. So this book um, I read last year, it's treating later life depression. We've been lovingly calling it the Stanford Project because these are all clinicians that were based at a Stanford University. And after I read it, I thought, well, we need something like this in Laguna Woods. So I emailed them, and they actually emailed back, which was amazing, and they wanted to work with us. So they helped design a program for us for people in Laguna Woods. It's about six to eight week program of cognitive behavioral therapy for people who are struggling with depression. It's been very effective. The scores we have seen for people in the beginning to the end have been significantly increased. Um, and we're very, we're very pleased to have the foundation. What they did is they <clears throat> paid for us, our staff, to do um, consultations with the Stanford people so that every month we gave <clears throat> case reviews and we discussed what's going on. They helped us fine tune the program. They pulled all of the individual sessions out from their book and created the eight week program. Um, it's been very, um, it's been very great. They actually were working in conjunction with them now to get a, um, an article published in a social work journal on, on how effective it's been in hopes that other communities like ours will initiate such a program. <coughs> Next slide. <coughs> so the Council on Aging is part of our um, incorporated about two years ago, I think. Actually, no, I'm, I've lost track of time. Since 2018, the Council on Aging has put uh, social workers in our department under my supervision to provide services to residents. So it was a, a great way to get more services to village residents without the cost of paying for more VMS staff. Um, they help, right, we've increased it to two social workers. They work very specifically, like I said, for social isolation and mental health issues. Uh, next slide. Last year and this year, through a grant, um, I don't think I wrote the grant down, but through a grant through UCI, um, we were able to initiate the 
uh, fall prevention class and as well as the um, uh, optimal aging lecture series. The lecture series is continuing into 2023. You can see these are all the doctors that we have coming in from March until August. It's going to be at Clubhouse 7. I hope all of you can attend. The next, the first one is going to be on next month on March 2nd, Clubhouse 7 at 2.30. Um, it's been a great opportunity to bring UCI physicians to talk about issues um, that are important to village residents. And next slide. So last year, the foundation paid for a fall prevention class. In 2023, it was covered under the grant. This is a class that has been extremely um, high demand. Um, we're realizing that we have to find a way to continue it once the grant has stopped because people have it's such a high interest in doing it. It's a, a three-week, once-a-month course that runs that um, has 20, about 20 to 25 residents can take it at, at a time. And it's all uh, fall prevention techniques and balance uh, and mobility um, classes. It's been very effective. Um, and people have found it to be very helpful. Typically, and the reason why we started this, like I said, was the security reports. It's hard to keep making these phone calls without giving something uh, that can help benefit people without saying, look, we have this program. So that's why we started that. So when someone does have a fall, we have a resource in our community that we can provide. Uh, next slide. Yep. That's it. That's me. Ed, do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. um, my, my question to you is that all these classes that are being offered, now the residents has to make a reservation, right? Only for the fall prevention one. Oh, the so, other ones? Um, oh. The other one, so for the therapy services, they just have to call our office um, oh, okay. so that we can make an appointment with a social worker. For the lecture series, you just can show up. You don't have to reserve a spot. OK, now the fall prevention classes, uh, in order for them to uh, participate, attend, they have to make a reservation. Yes. Uh, can they call you, or do they have to do it through the It's internet? through recreation. So they okay. would do it just like you would register for any class through recreation. Well, one of the reasons I'm asking is I know that um, there are good percentage of our elderly population mm -hmm. that do not have an access to internet. Oh, they can just call. OK. Yeah, you okay. can call recreation. You can go to Clubhouse, too, mm -hmm. or you can do it online. OK, OK. Yeah. Thank you very much. And, and it is, though, um, mm -hmm. we open it up a month before the classes mm -hmm. start, and it fills up usually within less than a day. OK. It's a really uh, high demand class. OK, now is that the, the, the attendance has been um, satisfactory? It has been. Okay. Typically, what we have found for any program that we do there are always about four or five people who don't show up. Uh, yeah. So we overbooked it. So we say 25 knowing we're going to get 20. Okay. And that's just life circumstances, we understand. Yeah. OK, thank you. <laughs> also, I had one experience with you. Uh, if someone wants, if when someone finds that somebody needs social help, you can always contact them and they take care. They will send your, their representative. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's my number, our, our number right there, 597-4267. But to register, you need to go through recreation. Yes. Are there any plans to put the fall prevention on TV? That's a good idea. It has, um, it has not been formalized yet. This is, the, uh, this is only the second session we've done it, but we're realizing from that, that how popular it is. So I think um, we're working right now, we're setting up a meeting with recreation and with the foundation to create ongoing programs after this one is over. Yeah. That would be VMS, um, not UCI. Yeah. Yes, um, first of all, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Many of them that you said I didn't know about that, even I live here six years. So that says that maybe many people like me didn't know about this program. Mm -hmm. Number one, I highly recommend it. this not just by a little bit, because evil ass is maximum four or five sentences that they write them. This program, exactly the way you said it, goes to the TV. Mm -hmm. And then everybody can hear what you are doing and offering. Mm -hmm. Because evil ass is six sentence maximum, and then they are just sending something. They are not giving all this behind right. that for the first time I heard today. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate, and I appreciate greatly. That's number one. Mm -hmm. And maybe um, a big, big, like two pages in the um, Braze uh, village, 
<laughs> so people know the most important, no matter how good you are, if people don't know what you offer, it's just amazing. Oh, it those was, people know. With the breeze, I was surprised. Uh, the cognitive behavioral program had a two-page spread, and within, mm -hmm. um, within half a day since that was published, we had uh, 12 people signed there up you for go. the program. I mean, there you go. It, um, we had to actually then stop advertising for a little bit because there's only so many of us. Um, and then we, we were being more strategic on how much we could, uh, how many cases, uh, therapy clients we could bring on. Actually, your example approved what I am saying. Yeah. That, that means that people don't know. Yeah. And uh, another question is, um, briefly, Director Cash uh, referred to that. Uh, if we notice, and we notice a few because it's coming to the board for getting fined, but we know these people might be needs help mm -hmm. rather than put huge amount of fine on them. Is it possible that we refer to you or other people refer rather than the person called? Because some people, uh, for one reason, I mean, how they are thinking, they might never, no matter how much you gave this information, they are not going to call you. But is there any possibility that we refer to you and somehow you find a way to talk to them and find them? We get a lot of referrals from the boards. Okay. Uh, we do. There's something to keep in mind, though. When it comes to, like what you said about the fines, um, we can work with someone if someone wants to work with us. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not a mandated program. Correct. Um, but we do know um, we're not going to go into someone's environment and see something's off and just say, well, they don't want to work with me and walk away. We're not going to do that. We are mandated reporters. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we see something is a harm to someone else, harm to themselves, self-neglect, which is the biggest referrals we make to Adult Protective Services and the Sheriff's Department, then we will do that. Um, but as far as someone just not complying, that's when we work very closely with compliance. Um, um, people's behavior sometimes is stemmed from uh, maybe a mental health condition, yes. and we do what we can to help with that. Um, oftentimes, uh, we see a lot of people with cognitive decline, some sort of dementia, um, Alzheimer's, and we will bring in the family um, and talk to the power of attorney and go from there. And we've been very successful in connecting with their, their network, their social support, and say, hey, do you know what's going on? and they don't, and they are able to intervene and help with their loved one. Um, that doesn't always go that way, though, and that's why I like to set that expectation that if someone is just saying, this is the way I'm going to behave, and I don't want to work with anyone, we, we can't force someone to change. And thank you so much. And the last comment is uh, I asking from uh, CEO, find a way that residents receive this information. I don't know how. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you think about that. <laughs> but I do want you to know, the thing that I find amazing is we get a lot of people who say what you're saying, who, and this might mean that you didn't need our service, but the people who need our service always tend to find us. Yeah. Um, so it might, we, I'm like, as you can see from our numbers, we have a very high volume. Um, so um, there are the people who are in need. Because we are such a unique community, um, we have more gatekeepers and people putting their eyes on our residents and seeing if something is wrong. If you were out, say, in Laguna Hills or Mission Viejo, your plumber is not going to call social services. Here, they do, which is pretty phenomenal. So we do have a great kind of safety net in place, and we do get a lot of referrals based on that. Yes, 400 compared to 18,000 people, I just times that is 2%. So mm -hmm. it's not very high. But if you look at the mental health but statistics. That's a totally understandable. Right. And if you look, though, at mental health certificates, um, mm -hmm. percentages, it's pretty close to what were people who would, in the general population, seek mental health services. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I would love it if 100% of people did. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't no, think no. we're in that culture yet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, Diane. Oh, oh uh, I just had a follow-up question with that, because you mentioned you get referrals from the Sheriff's Department, but do you get referrals from compliance? Yes, we work closely with compliance. So, so they might alert you to a repetitive yes, type of Yes, we have monthly situation. meetings with compliance. And um, the, the, the thing is, like, we don't, um, we in social services cannot impede or stop the rules and regulations. Right. So we do a lot of education to the residents saying, I understand you're struggling with 
this issue A, but that doesn't stop issue B from still happening. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So really the education of this behavior, this is the consequence. What can we do to stop this? Yeah, great. So working more on a cognitive behavioral approach of affecting change. Great, great. That's good. Thank you. I'm sorry. So you have access to all their emergency information? Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, with compliance, the uh, person who reports it does not hear back. With social services, is it the same way? It is. It's the same way. So Unless the person says, um, so when we get a referral, we ask everyone, do you want to remain anonymous? And they'll say yes or no. It's a lot easier when someone says, it's okay to share the information because what we have found is if I go into someone's house and say, someone was worried about you, all thought goes to, who was that? <laughs> and they want to figure out who it was instead of looking at the problem. Um, but I understand why people want to be anonymous. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I have a few questions, um, mm -hmm. if I could. Um, I was wondering, how large is your staff? Five social workers. Five. five. And then two administrative staff. And Thank you to the boards. We got approval to have one more social worker um, um, who we are looking to recruit right now. And, and are you supported by the federal government or state government, or how, how are you supported by? We are part of VMS. VMS. Oh. Yeah. yeah. The two social workers through Council on Aging are funded through their grants and put into ours, but we are part of VMS. I see. Okay. Yeah. And, and uh, last thing, I thought it was a great presentation. Um, I was wondering if you could, you know, we have the foundation and we have social services. Could you help us understand the, the basic differences between social services and the foundation? Why would someone go to the foundation? Why would someone go to social so services? So no one goes directly to the foundation. They go to us and we're the gatekeepers to those funds. I see. So the foundation is made up of a board of residents in Laguna Woods. Um, anytime someone, and they collect the money and they do all the fundraising and they create their missions of what they're going to work on, and then they collaborate with us to provide those resources. So we are the actual uh, workers to the programs where they're the residents making the money. It's almost like the relationship of VMS and VMS staff, the boards and the staff. Yeah. And foundation provides different type of services than... They only, they provide the money. They provide the money. They, are, they are the money. We are the programs. <laughs> so yeah, they raise a lot of money, and then it's we. Then they raise it. Also, keep in mind, it's not just uh, internal for social services. They help other programs that benefit residents as well. I see. Um, but it's um, it's they are the boards that raise the money. They do not work face to face. They have no uh, direct practice with residents. I see. That's us. Thank you. Yes. I think uh, I don't see the ad for bequests in the breeze. Maybe you should consider getting a half a page or something <coughs> always in the breeze. We typically get two pages every time. You do? Yeah. Um, okay. We didn't. La um, we usually, the articles we have done have been about mental health, um, about um, the social isolation, about fall prevention. Um, we're there. It's under social services. Um, there are a few that we skipped solely because, um, like I said, our, we are a small staff with 18,000 residents, and sometimes I have to ease up on what I'm doing because we can't manage. Um, and, the, and we do not have a waiting list. Anyone who needs our service gets our service, so we are a very busy department. So sometimes I have to pull back on advertising. My, my question more was for... Uh putting an ad so that people know you will accept or you're set up to accept bequests after they pass away. Oh, that's through the foundation. That's not us. Yeah, that's that would you. go through the foundation. And the foundation does do that. They, um, um, I believe they also have like a half page, like you said, in the breeze. Um, they also, if you look right in the hallway, they have their brochures for, um, um, for monetary donations. Uh, but that's what's separate. That's what... We don't, within our department, raise funds. Because uh, like I said, we are part of VMS. So um, it, that's what's amazing about it. Every, I mean, as a social worker, a huge part of my job outside, if I was in any other reality, I'd be having to 
earn my keep and be doing asking for money. Um, so it's nice that from my perspective, the foundation's doing that. I'm doing all the clinical work. It, it helps. Susan, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. We'll, we'll wait for member comments. Wait for member. Okay. I'm just to relate to this one. Okay, but well you could ask when you have member comments. Well, well I have okay. the other questions. I need you, could, you can ask when we have member comments. Okay. Well, is thank, you, Susan. Says thank you, Susan. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Any time inside of members' comments? Yes. Where is the rule, please, uh, Susan, you can. I can go. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank it you, was Susan. Wonderful to see you all. And please come. Um, we are right down the hallway, right here. If any of you have individual questions, you can just call me individually or just come into our office. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, at this point, we're going to have open forum, three minutes per speaker. At this time, members only may address the board of directors regarding items not on the agenda. <laughs> And within the jurisdiction of this board of directors, the board reserves the right to limit the total amount of time allotted for the open forum to 30 minutes. A member may speak only once during the forum. Speakers may not give their time to other people. No audio or video recording by attendees and no rude or threatening comments. Members can attend the meeting by joining the Zoom link or call that phone number or email to have your message read during open forum. So with that, um, who do we have for open forum? Our, our first speaker is Joe Fitzcum. Good morning, directors. Happy Valentine's Day. So have a heart. <laughs> we, uh, I came here for another purpose, but I just want to compliment the president on his earlier comments and what the accomplishments are. Uh, about three years ago, I was on the GRF board, and I remember voting down a situation to do a million dollars improvement on the very building he was speaking to. And now, after that, I heard there a, was a $6 million plan. I thought, oh, my God, what did we do? You know, so I'm glad you found a better solution to that. So thank you very much, and, and thank you for all your hard work. Uh, I've been here 10 years, and 20 years before that, I was in HOAs. I never showed up. I usually didn't have complaints. Uh, I think probably the last time I was here, I was probably on the GRF board and showed up for those types of reasons. As a resident, I think I showed up once to uh, thank this board for helping with the situation we had where we would have an excessive expenditure on an athletic facility and we managed to come to a, a happy conclusion. So I came in to thank the board. Uh, I remember there was laughter because they said, well, nobody does that. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for what you do. Uh, in the future, there's some things going on I think it could it's important our property values and our reputation maintain itself in a very good way. And I've seen some things that concern me outside of this board, but would concern this board in some ways. And I'm just offering, if anybody is inclined to do that, to our, our CEO or to our president here, or if you have someone who has more legal expertise, to speak to me. I think there's some things going on in the community. Uh, again, we, we live in paradise, but once in a while, maybe a, a snake might sneak in. Uh, that would be detrimental to us, even though the people taking action are honorable, correct, and honest. So I'm just offering information that I don't think this is the appropriate forum to mention it, but I just want to make it available if you feel that. I I've, I've, uh, uh, think I've always been straightforward about things in the past. I've only been involved in you know, some things with GRF, but obviously way back to the Saving the Village games and, and uh, working on the Pickleball pra program to, uh, to avoid a more expensive answer to it. So I don't know how to encourage you without saying too much, but really, uh, it'd be a really good thing if we talk. And I think it's good also for the CEO to know what happens through the rank and file sometimes that may come in that looks differently than what it really is. So anyway, I thank you all for your, your service and uh, have a good day and happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Our next speaker is Chris Collins. Chris Collins, 3306Q. I am so thrilled that Susan was here to represent what I have said for the last five, six years that I've come to these meetings. Um, I'm from the foundation. I um, come um, monthly to give you an update on what we do on behalf of residents here that are experiencing temporary 
um, a emergency, financial emergency. And this, this message today really is, um, it, it certainly dovetails with what Susan says. Our president, Marcy Scheinwald, she had written um, a message that was in the paper earlier, it was, it was last month, and it was about the fact that when she goes to meet um, with various groups, it's always amazing how people are not clear about what, the, that we first of all have social services here and the role of the foundation. And Susan made it in, you know, really clear that the foundation, we are the ones that raise money so that they can, when they don't have a funding stream of some other way to pay for things that people need, they come to us, but it's totally, totally confidential. It's blinded, the names are blinded, and then um, we fund. And as Susan says, we, we funded $100,000 worth of different services. Plus, we, you know, we contribute to Meals on Wheels, um, Alzheimer's, um, the, the daycare center, various things like this, and South County Outreach. We do a lot of different kinds of things. But we are the funding vehicle. But all the professional services, as Susan said, are delivered with people that are completely certified and you know, ready to be able to, to meet the needs of, of residents here. And, and, and so what Mar Marcy said was that that Marcy Shinewell is the president, and in going, she goes and speaks to groups and does various things in the community, and it's, people don't seem to know about social services because that's the gateway. We, we don't, foundation, we don't have anything to do. We don't know anything about individuals receiving aid. We pay directly to the funders, or to the, uh, the people that are, that are, that, um, are um, providing the services. Maybe it's hearing aids, maybe it's uh, fall prevention, the devices for notification. So that's really what it is. So um, I'm, I'm thrilled that Susan came here. And um, so, and, and her, her uh, report certainly is comprehensive in the things that are doing. What I think that what should be the takeaway is the fact that this, this is a really um, very busy department. You know, five social workers and herself and a couple staff people. And it's, they are just over there, you know, over the top with, you know, being busy. So if you have any, um, you know, questions, you can call a foundation at 949-268-2246. But the thing is, is that w you need to, people to get services, contact the, 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 the um, social services. And it's right here, as she said, down the hall. So thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Harold Medense. Good morning, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day, reiterating that. I'm sorry to be the one of the bad news. Mr. President, I'm here to beg of you on the board to see if we can do something with the services from VMS to us. And I would like to get an answer. This is very simple. Our dues are high. Services are low. Once a year, we get the smoke alarm inspections. We don't get it anymore. Go clean in the refrigerators and all the events and everything. We don't get it anymore. Mulch to put in the yard, we don't get it anymore. When you call for problems and you try to solve it, they try to tell you that it's your fault because you did this and did to your, to your unit instead of finding out what's really is on. The roof used to be inspected once or twice a year. We don't get that anymore. It's very simple. We pay more, we get less services. If we could get this back with what we're paying, we wouldn't be complaining. But when you don't get what you're supposed to get, and you get paid more, that's, that's a problem. And I don't care how you divide it, how you devise it. Uh, as some of your members have said, you have here to protect the corporation. I'm asking you to please protect us, because you're elected to protect us. Well, this is very simple. Uh, it's time to do something about it now, before it gets more complicated. Um, Try to protect us, and you represent us, and VMS works for us, not the other way around. And intimidation doesn't work. Transparency is what we need. So sorry to be the one that brings the news on Valentine's Day. No chocolates, no nothing for you guys today, so I'll leave it up to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Our next speaker is Terry Poulet. I'm actually going to read her question on her behalf. Uh, her question is, what is CD ladder status? Are we fully invested 
and what is the average interest? And that's the end of her question. And the next speaker we have is Maxine McIntosh. like those flashy shoes he's wearing. I hope you all get to see them. <laughs> Good morning. Happy Valentine's Day again. Um, I appreciate following after the nice report from social services. Uh, one thing I want to point out right away, it's easy to forget that as you take care of all the business for all of us in United Mutual, you also ride oversight on GRF. You really need to be aware of what GRF is planning to do, what they're planning to spend their money on, because they have no money of their own, generally speaking. It all comes from what you allot them out of our assessments when you do the budget each year. You're deciding how much of that goes to GRF every year. And so you need to really, I hope, you're practicing good oversight on how they're spending our money. And it makes it easier on them. They're not going to get into trouble when you're involved in decision making. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up was just recently a woman knocked on my door and uh, she was chatting a bit. She was telling me how difficult it is for an older single woman to live in the village. And I thought, gee, I would think she, you'd feel just the opposite. But she explained that she had no relatives, no family, no one but herself, and that she was thinking about moving from a a larger home she had shared here with her husband to something smaller. And she was just overwhelmed with the idea of what to move, what to pack, what to throw away, you know, everything that's involved. And I realized, you know, in hearing her speak, it kind of like a light went on in my head. And I suddenly realized I'd heard similar phrases many times during the year. And uh, maybe it's time to produce some kind of a packet or a little booklet that... Uh, indicates some of the services that people aren't aware of. Most people know about staging if you're selling a home. You can have a professional stager come in. She has you clear out the extra stuff and present your home at, in its very best hindsight and, and uh, for sale site. But uh, there, I just learned yesterday there's also professional help available for uh, deciding what to move. If one person is moving and just can't decide what to move, they actually come in and organize what you're moving to another location. And there are many facilities out there like that. And social services has information on a lot of them. But we have trouble getting through to people sometimes to make use of social services. And so I'm proposing some kind of a simple booklet or pamphlet that could be given to people. And a neighbor who can't get someone to come into social services could pick this up and put it in her mailbox, and it might be helpful. But I have heard this from quite a few people. When you're living alone, far away from everybody, things are really over, can be overwhelming. And it needn't be. All these services are available through social services. And in the globe, more people need to read those first eight pages in the globe each month, each week, excuse me. Thank you. Our final speaker is Andre Torn. Okay, while well, we're passing on this information, uh, do you want me to wait or do you want me to go ahead? Okay. Uh, so uh, I want to know where is the apologies I requested that uh, United provide me. Two board members took me to the, uh, and the other board members, uh, uh, staff, VMS staff, including our general manager, took me to the court for a restraining order. And, but the court dismissed this case without even listening to me. Listen to them and say, it's bogus, okay? Well, uh, we, I discuss, uh, dismissed this case, all right? So we wasted over $100,000 on this one, which is about $20 each member on this, uh, 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 in this community, okay? So, and, and uh, 
uh, the first the first month after that was I was totally waiting for the script. The uh, second month disappeared. Now it's the four, uh, third month. Okay, it takes so many months. A quarter, we have, still haven't got any answer yet, and the case dismissed. My request dismissed. Okay, so I wanted the answer. Okay, uh, what happened? Okay, or j just disappeared. We don't want to talk about it, and you're not going to get any answer. Okay. Second thing is, I want to follow up on the uh, occupancy agreement uh, uh, United Board member posted on the Globe. There's $9 million there, pretty much uh, that the surplus lost, pretty much $120 per manner per month. If you are getting seven, paying $700, you should only pay $500, $580, if this money is uh, uh, used uh, as described in the occupancy agreement. Okay, and the occupancy agreement states, okay, uh, uh, director, one of the director posted on the uh, uh, globe clearly, but it didn't speak, speak that. If we look at this, uh, uh, the occupancy agreement I passed on to you, okay, waves you, you, uh, you waive the right to receive a refund. That's what she said, okay, but she didn't read any further on that and share with us. It applied by the board of director of the mutual and it's sold, uh, in its sole uh, discretion to reduce the anticipated expenses uh, on the mutual as determined by the Board of Directors for the next succeeding fiscal year of the mutual. I've been on this board for six years. I don't remember ever received any request and say, we're gonna, uh, how are we, uh, uh, what's the decision board need to make for the surplus? I heard a story that in gave it to uh, GRF, no, it's United money, it's not GRF's money. And board needs to make a decision, not VMS make a decision. For some reason, VMS executive decide that this is money they can spend, okay, to help out GRF, okay? And I don't understand how come GRF is, every year is under budgeted and needs to raise this money from uh, uh, the uh, HR, uh, United. So please do your job and Thank help you. us find out that $9 million that, that Thank you, Andre. We need. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're going to move on. Uh, any comments regarding any of the speakers? Yes, I would like to, the, regarding to this investment um, that somebody asked, is it fully invested? Yes, it's fully invested after the board decided in uh, November 14 uh, to go totally out of mutual funds and goes to Treasury bill. In the laddering is uh, uh, two million dollars. It was uh, roughly close to fourteen million, and uh, seven two million dollars laddered from three to twenty four. Yes, it's correct and fully invested. The average interest rate is uh, is about uh, roughly because it's different from three months we started goes to all the way to twenty four months. Uh, the average is four um, percent. So I hope I answer the question for that one. And rest assured, you never see the negative again in that uh, unrealized gain. It's always positive. Okay, thank you. Um, so um, item 9B, respect, response to past open forum speakers. Do we have, uh, Director Liberatore, do you have some items? Thank you, Mr. Chair, yes I do. And forgive me if I mispronounce your name. Uh, first is uh, Catherine Art, 901Q. She requested uh, a designated handicapped parking spot close to her manor that would allow her in her vehicle to deploy her ramp without impacting her neighbors, her neighbor residents. The chair said that the item would be forwarded to the MNC committee and the assistant director of operations met with the resident after the meeting, and you'll find that this is being dealt with today in our, in our agenda packet. And then Mr. John uh, Kiefert, 11A, has asked for details uh, concerning the replacement of flat roofs. The director of maintenance and construction told us that the building 11 uh, is scheduled for roof replacement with a new PVC cool roof in 2024. His new roof will include 
appropriate, appropriate insulation as part of the replacement. Mr. Gary Kraft, Manor 224C. His building uh, suffers from uh, a lack of electrical service. And follow up, he, he wants, and follow up. He wants better communication regarding the handling of issues and better follow up. Uh, the resolution staff is working diligently to get all electrical work scheduled and to have issues, but they do have issues with limited staff in that division. The second issue uh, for Mr. Kraft complained about neighbors unregistered auto uh, in the carport and homeless, camp homeless camping in her carport was reported, but no action taken. Resolution, compliance cannot uh, report back to uh, on people private updates. Staff is held to strict confidentiality and cannot disclose any information concerning the disciplinary matters of another resident. Resident Andre Torn, 188B, uh, didn't really ask a question, just asserted that the solar program was a waste of money. The response, uh, Finance Director Stephen Harmuth responded that we actually saved uh, on average of $270,000 due to the solar program. Uh, further, from 2013 to 2016, we spent an average of $410,000. From 2017 to 2023, we now average $140,000, which means that we saved $270,000. Hardly a waste of money. Uh, second, uh, Resident Andre Torn noted the increase in assessment this year and the question why the surplus disappeared. Response, Steve Hermuth explained that there is no operating surplus. Instead, there is an operating deficit due to the increasing insurance on an annual basis. Uh, and then we had uh, Director Manny Robledo, 280P, uh, his personal he just gave his personal observation regarding the solar program from a business experience preference. And his statement was duly noted and recorded with no response from uh, staff or directors. That's all I have, Director Ross. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No. Why is it here? No. That's it. it You're done. You're done. Yeah, I know. You're done. So I won't get any apology okay. anymore. Won't even discussion. Point of order. I think call we for need security. security to to remove him. No. I think. Uh, or, or I ask, where is my request? I have a request. I have a comment, and there's no com no response on that. That's it. You're done. You're. We we'll ask you to leave. No, I'm not going to leave. You can take me out. Okay. okay. Call so for security. Right so call I have security. the right to ask questions. Call for security. If you don't want to respond. Yeah, Point of order. Wasting my time. Take a five-minute break, order. I would recommend. Yeah. Okay, let's take a five-minute break. Okay, thank you. Um,
We'll move forward. Um, so at this point, um, I'd like to introduce Director Khan, and he's going to be presenting the VMS board update. <laughs> Morning to the residents, and happy Valentine's Day for everybody. Uh, I'm Norm Khan, and uh, uh, 
I'm on the VMS board representing United for the last two years. And uh, I'm also uh, currently and up till well, recently, uh, I'm on the monthly operations committee with uh, President Ross um, and uh, kind of getting more and more involved in what's going on in the, in the community. And it's a pleasure to work with him. He's, um, he's a man of action. <clears throat> there, there isn't much substantial news to report today. I'm sorry to say, um, mostly due to the post-holiday seating of new directors, which, um, uh, let me just try to read this. Uh, the seating of new directors and the time that it needed to uh, bring them up to date. Uh, many major accomplishments achieved in 2022 by VMS were outlined in the current issue of the Village Breeze, which I highly recommend everybody read. Uh, it will give us, it's, it's currently out, it's the January, February issue, and uh, has a lot of information about the savings that we affected uh, last year that will continue on into this year. Uh, on the latest events, uh, last month, VMS held a one-year follow-up to the three-year strategic plan, which took place um, in March of last year. Um, the strategic planning was uh, uh, a three-year program that we outlined, and uh, the meeting was represented by all the boards, VMS uh, department heads, and it happened again this year, last month. The last year, the managers were given specific assignments to initiate with progress monitored by KPI, uh, which was a tracking system, uh, or otherwise known as key performance indicators, which uh, we are all working with. Uh, we're pleased to report that, the, that except for a few departments, the service results have been simply outstanding. The complaints have gotten on way down and the service is being handled much faster than ever before. Well, not ever before, but certainly since, the, since COVID. Um, to be sure, of course, there are still problems, uh, you know, that VMS is continuing to address. The, the main problems that we're, we're dealing with are staffing, which is still a very difficult problem for several departments, such as landscaping. Uh, landscaping is... Uh, uh, is run by a union. We have 200 employees in the union, and roughly for the last 18 months, the union has been unable to find us any help. Consequently, the, the burden of fulfilling or filling the uh, landscaping jobs were left to our human resources recruiting people, and they've done an outstanding job. They've been more successful than the union, of course, but not as successful enough <laughs> we still have about 29 full-time openings to fill or 15% of what would be our normal need. That is something that we are fighting on a, on a weekly, monthly basis, and hopefully it'll get better, but I don't know where that goes. We're, we're struggling, we're working overtime, we're doing whatever we have to to maintain you know, the, uh, you know, all the land. The other major problem area is maintenance and construction. The same problem exists there as far as staffing is concerned, and that exists in most departments, uh, particularly in damage restoration, which has a one-year backlog, um, and appliance replacement, which has an 18-month backlog. Those, of course, are unacceptable. At last month's operations uh, meeting, the director of maintenance and construction was authorized by President Ross to uh, locate outside services to rapidly reduce the United Mutual portion of appliance installation backlog. Um, the inventory that we need is currently available. It's in our warehouse. So that should be taken care of. The backlog consists of approximately 189 um, installations and with outside help, we hope to have that under control in several months. Uh, damage restoration, which is the other problem with a very heavy backlog in, in maintenance and construction, added another staff member that should and will reduce the, the backlog. 
Um, that goes back quite a bit. We are, uh, it's a department that requires training, so we can't just bring somebody in and say move the, the numbers around. We have to educate them and train them. So we are looking for additional personnel to commence training and get that backlog worked down. The, the current figure is that by the end of this year, we should be having the current um, needs. Keep in mind that while we are doing working on the backlog, we're also dealing with the current stuff. So we're not falling further behind, but it's, it's tough to catch up when you're that far behind. Most of it was COVID related, unfortunately. Um, security. They share the same staffing problem, but to a lesser degree. It's also being fixed, and uh, as does as speculation as well has the same problem. Um, recreation has 19 openings, primarily needed to staff the clubhouses. That's been an area of concern because that requires odd hours for people. People who are married have a problem working nights and days, and it goes back and forth. So. Flexibility is a problem, and we haven't been able to connect to enough people to handle the clubhouses, although we are, they're open, we're, we're, we're functioning, but uh, that is, again, a, a troubled area. Um, next problem that uh, has been dealt with and dealt with well is due to inflation, uh, rising wages, and market competition, uh, some department hourly rates were seriously below market to the point that we just couldn't hire people or retain people. With the 2023 budget, most hourly rates were adjusted up to current market, particularly at the lowest level where they were the furthest behind. Um, as a result, I'm pleased to say that we had 22 new hires in January alone, which was the most in years. However, uh, even after the record hiring month, we still have 75 open positions throughout the community. Again, there's always some openings. 75 is approximately 10% of our work staff. We are working on that. We are making headway. Human Resources is doing a great job, uh, but the market is what it is, and we're competing with everybody for people. The good news is VMS has its pulse on the, uh, the many difficult issues that are facing the village, and it's proactively dealing with them on a daily basis. With the new budget in place and the effect of several large expense reductions, many of which can be seen once again in the village breeze that's currently on, out on the streets, uh, in a few months we hope to be well up on the backlog on the curve. Um, in, in addition to that, we are all hands-on to continue the high level of service that we've instituted in the last uh, year and a half or two, and we are working on that at the same time that we're dealing with all these problems. Um, that my uh, fellow board members are all I have to say for this report. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Bizarre. Thank you so much. Yes, it was complete. And you mentioned about um, landscape, and uh, you mentioned that is outstanding job. Uh, well, I said uh, as a job, <laughs> but uh, the one of the biggest complaint among the top from residents is landscape. So what? you or VMS board can do a little bit address that. Uh, well, many, uh, many, many, they, I, I am receiving regularly, like weekly, one or two emails that send a picture, why this, but I, I don't respond to them, honestly. I, I don't know what to say. And well, that's a problem. Well, as I stated, pardon me, get some water. Um, as I stated, the part of the problem is the union. We have a union, um, you know, it's a union department. So all landscape is bad because well, we have Well, the union? problem is that they, they have something to say about who we hire, and um, they have not been very cooperative. Fortunately, the union contract is coming up the end of this year, and there will be negotiations in several next few months. Okay. 
Um, but the people out there just aren't there. We just don't, we're competing with uh, local gardeners. We're competing with companies who give them cash under the table. They don't, young people don't care about benefits. So we're at a great disadvantage. And it isn't a matter of money. It's just a matter of, mm -hmm. you know, we can't get the people. They just don't exist. So okay. we, are, we have authorized overtime. We are doing everything we can. People are coming in on times they shouldn't. We're, we're doing emergency services, uh, but we're dealing with the union. So our hands are somewhat tied, but we're on it. You know, we know what's coming. We know we have to do something, and the union knows it too. Thank you. I will respond as in like that. <laughs> Thank okay. you. We're trying. Good. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on, we just had a, a, an excellent report by Kurt on, on, uh, on the statistics and the follow-up from earlier and how they're doing things. If people are getting complaints for members, they need to forward them to Kurt's office. <coughs> um, they're doing a very good job. You know, they're trying. It is hard. They're understaffed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they do have the, uh, you know, they can't hire more contractors, you know, because the uh, union does prevent that. So, um, you know, uh, I think, just think you need to get um, a little more proactive in uh, reporting the problems. Yeah. And, and okay. also at that, at that meeting, too, because I was at the same meeting, um, he, they, they are responding to clients. Uh, some, our members call sometimes three or four times a week for different things, and, and they, they do respond with their requests. And, and as, as, as quick as they get responses uh, from a request from members, they have two-man teams, he explained to us, that go out and cut the bushes or do whatever the, the issue is as quickly as they can. And they are a little bit understaffed, so, um, but they, they do a pretty good job. Based on based on the results that we heard at this meeting but yesterday, you're right. You're right, President Ross. But we are current, and you know whatever has to be done immediately, the emergencies are all taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, you know we are we're buying out as much as we can buy out with with, the, with our budget constraints. Uh, for example, uh, instead of uh, taking down a whole bunch of pine trees, uh, I, my understanding is that they they did a tremendous. Um, you know, peeling of the of the trees to uh, really take them back down and make them healthy, and, and and that's something that they've never done at that magnitude before. So you know, we are doing a lot of things. We're pushing as hard as we can, mm -hmm. but again, we're dealing with the union, and uh, there's so much we can do. Yeah, and and one follow up to Lenny's uh, or President Ross's uh, comment is that if you have a ticket, you know, that's under 30 minutes, they send out this two man crew. You know, so those things can be handled quickly. If it is something that's going to take time, they're trying to let you know how long it's going to take, when they're going to get to it, if it's on the schedule already. So uh, they want to hear from you if you've got a problem, you know, and they'll let you know where you stand. And if, if it's something that can be taken care of right away, they will. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, Kurt Wyman has done an incredible job. He yeah. is a major asset of, of this community. And we give him all the cooperation and help and assistance we can, and we will continue to do that. He is uh, an outstanding uh, director, and he works his team well. He knows what he's doing. He's an, he's an expert at what he does, and, and we're just thrilled to have him on board, and the rest of the village should be as well. Mm -hmm. uh, perfect. Yeah, I was also in the meeting that uh, where we had a Kurt's uh, excellent presentation yesterday. Um, we also discussed there are tickets or phone calls that are being lost in, in the process. So some people get very, very frustrated because they don't get a follow-up. And they, they are aware of the situation. Uh, however, as a directors, when we get all these complaints, I usually check, check it up. But I, first of all, I would always encourage them to create a ticket. So we would have a ticket number. And we can follow up as well to help them to um, reduce their frustration. And some, um, you know, uh, we can be part of the solution as well. And I'm sure in the future, uh, VMS will have a plans to cut down on this uh, communication. I think a lot of it is a communication problem. So you are waiting on one side, and a landscape does not know that uh, it's being uh, lost. 
and you know amount of uh, tickets that they deal with, uh, those things has to. I mean, this, those things are gonna happen. However, um, as a board, we can be a part of the solution. We can also uh, help them to uh, follow up on their communication. Some sometimes they don't get the response because it just takes three, four months because they're backlogged. But then as long as the residents are informed, they are backlogged. And you know, and that's that's a communication. So I think the getting a response is uh, number one key. And we can also help them and work together. But I overall I was very impressed at uh, Kurt's uh, presentation yesterday. And I think they are doing the best with what they have. Yeah, we're, we're, we're short. And I appreciate we're it. Short. There are almost 30 people. And, I, I and know. That's 15% yes. of our staff. Yes. And, and you know, residents have to understand that. And some of them don't. Uh, yes. uh, they've called three or four or five times for something. Uh, we've had calls in the rain that they wanted service in the rain. Yep. I mean, come on. I mean, yeah, we, you know, we're, we're, we're dealing with fire sometimes. And we, can't, we can't just stop what we're doing. But uh, we are doing a great job. And, and Kurt Wyman has done a spectacular job. It will, it will even itself out. Hopefully the labor market will change, and hopefully with the, with the new union contract, that might open up more doors and we'll have more people come on. So mm -hmm. it all depends on where we go with this by the end of the year. Okay. Thank you. I think we need to always remember, too, about expectations, and that you pay enough money, you can get anything you want. But we have to balance a budget and have to keep those expectations within a reason for our membership and everything. So even though it's not a perfect landscape out there, we got water reduction, we got staff shortages and everything, it's important that we make sure we use our dollars for the infrastructure we need so we don't end up in other situations where there's not the proper amounts going to the things that are needed the most. And I'd just like to say I appreciate the landscape here. I think it's very good, not perfect. And I, I personally don't want to pay for perfect. <laughs> yeah. I want to pay for <laughs> reasonable. Say. <laughs> and I think that's something we need to keep in mind is a balance between what we need done and the cost of it and everything. So I do appreciate the service, and there's always ways to improve. So. Thank you. Well, thank you. We we yeah. we we we, uh, we stretch that budget about as far as we can. We push we push it as hard as we can. But you know, so many dollars are so many dollars. Yeah. Oh, so one thing I wanted to bring up is that Kurt did say he he just hired two three staff members. I believe it is right. Three mm -hmm. staff members, and that's amazing because it's been hard to get them. So yeah, well, the market's loosening up a little bit, and, mm -hmm. and maybe coming towards summer it might even get better. So we're hoping for the best, but. We're out there fighting and struggling, and you know, we, we're doing the best we can to get people. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. And I, yeah. I, I was just, I was just going to say we should probably wrap up this conversation. Yes. You're more and, morning. Um, as a as a wrapping, I should say, um, everybody should understand that residents mostly they come to the directors at the end. If they are going to the resident service, they have the ticket. When they are not following up with that, that's at the end of frustration, their email to us. We are not the first person that they are coming, hey, I, said, I opened a ticket yesterday. So, so when I am saying, yes. when I receive email, mm -hmm. I know it's already in the process. And they said they don't get the response, mm -hmm. and then they call to us. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, the comment that they said you have to send it to the, they already know. Yeah. They already yeah. know the, yeah. the problem. Yeah. Uh, so I don't need to send that one to the yeah. landscape department yeah. when the ticket is right there. Yeah. But as a process, it just need a little bit more communication and sometimes it goes down. Uh, the great example is my unit is in front of the slope and our neighbors for two years ask for cleaning until I directly goes to the room of mm -hmm. Mr. Kurt that didn't get cleaned. Mm -hmm. So what do you want more than this example? Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Uh, all right, let's, let's move in. on. Yeah. Okay, item number, oh, thank Pearl, you. Pearl thank had you. a question, though. Oh, one, one, th one thing. Pearl. Okay. I think, oh, Meg. Go ahead. Siobhan, do you have something to say? No, I was just going to encourage anyone who has resident concerns to pass them on to me, Carlos, and Catherine. Mm -hmm. They will be expedited as appropriately. 
And I really think we should bring this conversation yeah. to them. Yeah, which we are. Okay. Thank, thank you, Norm. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you too. Okay. Ron, this is CEO report. Thank you. I'll be brief. I know you've had a long morning of presentations. <laughs> I did want to bring up the budget schedule for 2024 on the screen so everybody can see it. The budget schedule kicks off in March where we review departmental service levels for the current year and we review landscape and maintenance service levels for the current year. So those meetings for United are March 20th. March 23rd, and March 29th. Then we move into the preparation of the 2024 budget. There is a maintenance review on Tuesday, May 30th, and the landscape review on Wednesday, May 31st. The initial business plan review will occur on Thursday, July 13th. The business plan review that is televised occurs on Wednesday, August 9th, followed by the uh, tentative schedule for business plan adoption at your regular board meeting on Tuesday, September 12th. All these meetings are in the boardroom and this schedule will be shared throughout the community so everyone has it. But I just wanted you to get your uh, initial dates so you know what to expect for the 2024 business plan. Uh, very briefly, Director Khan talked, uh, talked about the VMS strategic plan update which members of this board participated in. I just wanted to emphasize that the three-year goals that we are working toward are to attract, develop, and retain high-quality staff, working with the boards to maintain fiscal stability and the longevity of the village, provide excellent customer service, and facilitate operational excellence and sustainability. And to support these three-year goals, we have six-month strategic objectives or action items that each of the departments will be working on collectively to help bring these goals to fruition. And again, I want to thank those board members who participated in this effort. And lastly, I want to ask everyone to join me in thanking the Laguna Woods Arts Association for the newly installed art exhibit. Many of those pieces are in this room. There are more than 150 pieces of artwork displayed among the first floor and third floor hallways and alcoves of the community center. And underneath each picture or beside each picture is a placard that features the artist's name, artwork title, medium, dimensions, and price of the, the artwork. And then residents are also encouraged to vote for their favorite piece. I've seen many residents walking through enjoying the artwork. Uh, during the month of February, residents can pick up a ballot from the concierge desk and vote for their favorite artwork. The winner will be announced in What's Up in the Village on Friday, March 3rd, mm. and during the Laguna Woods Arts Association reception. And again, we really want to thank the artists who brighten our day every day, and I'm sure those uh, board members who view the art also appreciate it. So thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, could, could you show that chart for the budget calendar again? Oh, sure. So I, I wanted to be sure that these are all open meetings. And they're all open to um, our residents or members to attend. Mm -hmm. okay. And so I just wanted to make everyone aware of that, everyone that's watching, aware that you're welcome to attend these meetings. Um, these meetings will determine our assessments for 2024. So they're very important. And um, we welcome um, anyone that would like to attend. I'd like to add that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Siobhan. Okay, next is a consent calendar. All matters listed under the consent calendar are recommended for action by committees and will be enacted by the board by one motion in the event that an item is removed from the consent calendar by members of the board, such items shall be the subject of further discussion and action by the board. Is there any, um, any, any objections to any items on the consent count? I move to accept all at once. Okay, is there a second? Okay. Um, we don't need to vote, right? We just... Well, uh, if you, you can ask if there is any objection. Any objections? Pearl? I, I think um, 
Maggie had a, a question. She had her hands on. Oh, that was earlier. I'll deal with it later. Thank you. Okay. Okay. With no objections, then the consent calendar is approved. Okay. Uh, item number 13, committee assignments. Uh, so, there, uh, yeah. Okay, well, let's, what we're going to talk about, let me, let me explain. Um, uh, let me do a little introduction on the committee assignments. So let's go to the page, committee assignments, which is 13A. Okay, so I, I want to kind of explain um, what I came up with, um, and one of the things that that I wanted to do was uh, give our newest director some more committee assignments. That's Allison Bach. Secondly, there was a replacement for Reza, whose uh, Reza has officially resigned from our uh, our director position. And that's why we're going ahead and replacing him. Um, but so finding more committee assignments for Allison, replacing Reza with our existing directors. And what I tried to come up with was an average for United directors of two to three committees per director. And for GRF, three to four positions per director. I tried not to change many of or very few of the current positions that you're currently on, as few as possible. And therefore, with those things in mind, I came up with this proposal. And so, so let's, let's discuss it. Uh, because you have to make a motion before any discussion, I'll move okay. to accept the recommendation. And if we can a second, then discuss and then change it. Okay, so you make a motion to... Yes, I make a motion to accept the uh, recommended uh, committee members as is. Okay, and then and, and uh, I'll, I'll second it. Okay. And, and so now, now we discuss. discuss. And then. Okay, thank you. So, so I noticed I was taking off my a committee for GRF, and uh, that that's what I'm uh, committee I was on since inception. So I, I have an argument with that, um, that Mary Simon was added to that. Now, Mary Simon has three united committees. I mean, committees. We're not talking about ad hoc. We're talking about committees. And she also has, um, she's, she's also on the Maintenance and Construction Committee, which she is not on the Maintenance and Construction Committee for GRF, which I think that's kind of a mistake. I mean, I know Allison has put on it, but... Um, I think she has this expertise in that area, and she's and she is on the um, maintenance and construction committee for um, United. United. Right. So I object to being taken off the, and also you know, Mary or or whoever. I, I was on some committees that I was taken off of, and and uh, replaced with Mary, uh, which I felt I was very uh, contributing on governing documents committee. I was taken off that. Mary Simon was added to that. And so I do resent this um, replacement of me on the information technology. I mean, it's a, it's a committee that meets um, not every week, but uh, a few times. It is ad hoc. And, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot going on. Um, I can't contribute. I'm not a consultant. I mean, I can listen to you know, what's happening. They're having 90 meetings with uh, staff. You know, they're moving along, planning on implementing in May. So, um, so you prefer to go back on information yeah. technology? Yeah. Okay. So that's fine. I'll put you back on information technology. <laughs> oh. Okay, you don't mind being pulled off of that? I don't mind being removed from any of All right, all right. <laughs> we'll, we'll remove Tom from information technology and replace Tom with Diane. Put Diane back on. 
Okay. Any, yeah. any, any other requests? Or, Tony, sure. Yeah, uh, Director uh, Chairman Ross, I, this maintenance and construction, you've got two new people on there. You have somebody on there right. that's got some experience. Exactly. Like who? I don't know. Like you who? name them. But there's two people there that they're just, just got elevated to director. What do they know about maintenance and construction? Um, can I can I respond to that? No, one? Is, well, you don't have the okay. chair. I'm yeah, talk, okay. I've got the chair yes, right now. I know. All right, no. all right. So let's. We're Everybody not can debate. talk. We're not going to debate. Okay. All right. Um, it's your opinion. That's fine. Um, uh, the question is: Every year, new members comes. When Pearl comes uh, last year, was in I don't know eight nine uh, committee. So people putting in the committee based on their backgrounds. And um, I think uh, when they are talking about maintenance and construction, you're talking about a golden fund, or a GRF, or you're talking about United. United. If you're talking about United Maintenance and Golden Chain, because Mary and is, is, is engineer. And uh, so based on that, we just uh, were in that position. It's not because of the person, is background. Um, so Mary, Mary has been waiting. So let's. That's Mary. Mary, come. can you hear us? Oh. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Speak up louder. So, um, as far as uh, documents, um, what um, Diane said, that's fine, Diane. Um, if, if for me, going off documents is fine. But on uh, maintenance and construction, Tony, I, I. In my career as an engineer, as a plant engineer, I've been in, uh, involved in a lot of construction. So if that, if you have a concern about that, um, I would like you to understand that I do have experience in it. And being put on the GRF MNC and the United MNC kind of um, makes sense in that they are interconnected. So... That's all I got. Thank you. Okay, so, okay. Uh, let's let Pearl go. Yeah. Lenny, also, Mary has attended maintenance committee at least two or three times before. I mean, last past meeting, so she's not brand, brand new. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. Okay. So, Mary just gave up her spot for governing documents. So I'd like to get back on that. So oh, wait, wait, let's talk one at a time, one yeah. at a time. So governing documents. Oh, is that what Mary suggested? She was yes. Taken off. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bizarre. Okay. So Diane, back on governing documents. Don't want to overload people with too many committees. That's uh, no idea. So hold on. Uh, can I say something? If the young wants to add up one here, one there, one there, and all of a sudden become like last year that one person get lots of and other not. Mary, two, and me, too. No. Mary, two, and me, too. Committees. Mary, two, and me, too. I can be on two committees. Okay, can you be polite and professional? Okay, That's we're not, we're not debating. Me. We're oh not debating. Excuse me. We're not debating. <laughs> This is about the seventh time I've raised my hand. Okay, go ahead. go ahead. Thank you so much on this one. Okay. Um, if Allison takes my place on broadband ad hoc, that committee has been going on for a year. You will have a whole lot of stuff that you must read, okay? I'm sure you're capable of doing it. So, but, <laughs> but... It is a, a really very good committee, but you will receive a fat package. Just be prepared for it. Okay. And one other thing I'd like to suggest is that we are very careful about putting two people on a GRF committee who have never been on GRF committee before. GRF committees like all our committees, go from year to year to year. We don't stop and then begin a whole process. So we're in mid-process for every, especially, GRF committee, and they don't meet very often. So it is truly, truly, truly important 
for each director to read up on the committee if it's the first time they're going to be there, to follow the okay, agenda. We always have the staff reports first, and then we have the discussion on the staff reports. We do not have questions on the staff reports before the staff has given the reports. We need to prepare ourselves and read the agenda package. Point we have order, yeah. It's okay. talking uh, I'm sorry. Yes, no, I would just say. I, I would like to say that this is the first time I've had a chance to speak all meeting, all meeting. And so I want to be heard. I am serious about that. There was a disaster in the committee last week because four, four directors, all well intended, all bright, four new directors to the committee knew nothing about the committee. Point of information. Okay, so, so okay. Is that to not a valid well, point listen, for everybody listen, to consider? Listen, listen. This discussion is about committee assignments, not lecturing people on how they should listen or how they should take notes or anything like that. So if you want to stay on focus, we're talking about committee assignments, okay? Yes. If you, have, if you have a decision which you want to be on a committee or you don't want to be on a committee, this is the time to discuss. No, I just want to say this is committee assignments. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have, I have a request. Since um, if Mary wants to get out of the government document and Tom already give one of his position, Tom uh, should be on that one Pure because at that, Pure at that time, not it doesn't matter. The it adding matter. is matter. We are not debating. We are not debating. You're not running the show. We are not debating. We're not debating. Okay, do you have an idea? I, I, I suggested Tom being governing that. No, come on. You know what you're trying to do. Can we put you want to get our hands? Control. Can I please ask that we raise our hands to speak and be yeah, recognized by the president? Yeah, please raise your hand to speak. I uh, make the amended motion that on the United Governing Documents Review Committee, we add Diane Casey on there okay. and remove okay. Mary Simon, okay. that we, uh, on the GRF Maintenance and Construction Committee, that we amend that to leave Mary Simon on that and that on the Information Technology Advisory Committee, we remove Thomas Tuning and add Diane Casey back in. Thank you. I think Allison. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Did uh, staff get all those changes? Okay, they got it. Okay. So, um, just so so we have it. So, the other changes were governing documents. Mary Simon is off. Diane Casey is on. And it, that's it for United. Yeah. And then GRF. Maintenance and construction. Mary Simons is on GRF. Maintenance and construction. With GRF, there's only two. Um, so who's taken off of GRF? Maintenance and construction. Is Allison? Because you could only have two, right? Right. Okay. So Allison would. Is that and okay? then Allison says alternate. she's going to go. Okay. Allison, okay. take it. So off. Allison's off of GRF maintenance and construction. Mary Simon is back on. Okay. And what was the other one? Information. Information technology. Diane Casey is on, and Tom is off. No. Yeah. Mary's on. 
Right. And Mary's on. Okay. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> and, and Tony, did you have a request? Uh, uh, President Ross, I'd like to request that staff, uh, when they get this, if they could put it in my mailbox, because my short-term memory is not good anymore. Okay. okay. Thank you. Next item, 14B, entertain a motion to approve supplemental appropriation for United Turf Reduction Projects. You skipped 13B. Oh, I skipped. No, I'm sorry. 13B, I skipped one. Skip two. Um, 13B, entertain a motion to rescind resolution 12273. Interboard anti harassment, anti abuse, anti intimidation policy, and formation of joint hearing body. So this is 13B. I moved uh, the so, motion for reason. So here I'm going to need some help from staff on this. So I know there's been a lot of changes in the anti harassment policy, and that the last change that we had directed. Um, staff to do was to have our own anti-harassment policy. Yes. And, and so yes, I, I just want to be sure we're voting for that when we vote for this. So this rescinds the joint hearing body that you approved on November 8th. If you'll remember, you approved it with the assumption that third was also going to be part of it. That's right. We brought it back once third elected not to be part of it and you turned it down. So we need to rescind that November 8th resolution. And then item 14G on your agenda is the standalone anti-harassment policy as reviewed by uh, legal counsel to make sure all applicable laws are reflected in that policy. So we need to cancel the or approve the November 8th, rescind the November 8th, and approve the new policy, which is 14G. Yeah, that is correct. I second okay. our czar's motion. Second, okay. So your, what was your motion? Uh, to, to accept this recent and then second it. So if there, ask if there is any objection. Okay, is there any objection? No, okay. Okay, so 14G is, 13, 13B. 13B is approved, okay. Okay, 14A, town hall. So um, at, the, at the January 13th town hall, Diane did a great job on uh, moderating it. And I think there's some slides or there's some in the package, there's, a, there's some presentation material that's part of 14A. I think it's included. Do you want to talk about the town hall from January? Um, it, there's. That's ours. That's ours. Oh, it's ours is January. No, January. No, mine is January. Yours is January. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Yours right. was State Farm agent, right? Yeah. Chase well, Douglas. Well, so. It was wonderful. Yeah. I think what really helps yeah. too is on the flyer, I put uh, on there if you want to reserve a, a seat. So then we knew. You know, that there was a big response, and um, they set up 130 chairs, you know, for, for that. And it filled up, and it was an excellent presentation. Uh, the presenter, who knows um, Laguna Woods as far as insurance and the HO6 policies, and he stayed there for the two hours and answered every question. And they, were, they weren't repetitive. They were questions, genuine questions that they wanted answers to. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it was excellent. Tom was great and helping out. And, um, you know, it was, um, it was really good. Uh, the facility was great. And uh, it was calm and, and very informative. And I just spoke to Dan, uh, you know, who recommended him because he says he knows the community. And, um, you know, Dan said that, uh, you know, he got some good com comments about it. I think that um, the HO6 policy, which he recommended, 
very important for people that spend a lot of money in upgrading their properties because if there's damage due to leaks or damage due to spills and moisture intrusion, all these kind of damages could cost tens of thousands of dollars of damage to their upgraded property. And this insurance, HO6, picks up a lot of that damage and, yeah. and for those residents. And that's why um, it was very good presentation. He did a good job doing that. But I'll give you a little, a little example is, um, you know, I put in a, a tub upstairs that was replacing my other tub and uh, I had a leak downstairs in the downstairs bathroom and, you know, VMS came in, took the walls out, looked and saw that it could be from my tub. <laughs> and so then I had to go get people to fix it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so later on, when it was determined, at the, they put the drywall back up, VMS fixed it all up and painted it and did all that. And then later I had a claim, mm -hmm. you know, because it was my tub. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I submitted it to my HO6 policy and it was like $2,600. I wow. mean, I had a $1,000 deductible, mm -hmm. but it did, they, they had no problem. In fact, you know what they said, uh, State Farm said, that's a very inexpensive repair <laughs> for that kind of a, a repair. So That's good. It saved uh, you some money, though. Yeah, saved so VMS you. is very reasonable. You know? okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, and then, then the other town hall, which just happened February 10th, was moderated by Azar on roof maintenance. So, Azar, would you like to talk a little bit about yes, that? Yes, thank you. Yes, it was a great presentation. Uh, the speaker that I invited was from a lender company that are very familiar with here. Since 1990, they have been with us. So, they knew, as he said, I know every roof of this uh, community. Uh, community. Um, uh, lots of questions um, raised up, especially two, three people has lots of problem that they explain, but it's still people were um, unfamiliar what is covered, what is not, and that's what I am asking again. VMS somehow uh, put a, a cheat sheet or or in the um, website or somewhere that people knows what is responsibility of them regarding to the roof if something happened and what is responsibility of the VMS. Because one resident, after he explained that we are cleaning the roof, he, she was just shaking head and says, just I paid someone to come and clean my roof. I didn't know that um, VMS doing. And I understand the response is gonna be, we send all of them in the package first in the residence, but we all know, and we are 55 plus, we forget it. And then it need to be reminded. Just every time that I say something, it says, oh, it's in the package that sends once when you buy it. I don't know where is that package even in my house right now when I bought six years ago. So it's not uh, that's the response and we need. And um, I wanted to bring, because I promised uh, some of them to uh, bring uh, um, uh, Nancy from 669N. Uh, still, uh, this is after uh, for um, a roof. Uh, wants the bigger numbers on the building, and it's uh, it's very hard for people to sing. I started uh, apparently a few months ago, and based on COVID, a few years ago, based on other uh, person that says uh, constant gutter issue for five years. A section has been replaced and it still have issue. Uh, so this is stuff um, we need uh, because uh, problem. Uh, another important things that one resident says, says you send, a VMS send all of this information to owner. I am a renter and I don't even receive um, a village, uh, um, no, the e-blast because the email goes to the owner. Owner is in the New York. And all of this information is activity for the residents. So I am highly recommended a, a program comes, I don't know how, that a renter get information even regarding to cleaning the roof or something because it's, it's renter, not the owner. Uh, I know information, um, I pass it to the VMS. Um, if that. I could interrupt, anyone can sign up for the e-blast, anyone. It's not limited to members only. 
Uh, yes, and that's why I sent the email to uh, Alice actually uh, yesterday, and she mentioned that even that must be information. They didn't know that there is an um, email address that they have to send, and that must be kind of for uh, uh, giving those email address to people. So uh, that was uh, something, uh, considering uh, passing information to renter. Lenny, yeah. I just have one comment. Yeah, I thought that was an excellent presentation, you know, by Lecter Roofing. Um, really informative. Uh, I, I have a really good roof. <laughs> you know, it's on a Seville. It doesn't seem to be so problematic. But, um, you know, I think those kind of, uh, that information is really good for people to understand. And maybe he could even write something in the breeze. I don't know. I mean, the fellow who spoke was excellent. He knows our community. Mm -hmm. Very knowledgeable guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to let you know that uh, what I like about Letner, I don't know the quality. I'm sure the quality is acceptable. But when you hire a contractor, sometimes in their bid, they, they charge you portal to portal from when they leave their yard to when they go back. In our case, Letner camps right alongside a garden plot, too. So that's one thing I like about Letner. One of the things that came up was... Um, and one of the recommendations that came up, or suggestions, was that when you're going to do roof inspections, um, there's probably a list of properties that are going to be inspected, whether it be the next six months or the next three months. And the residents were asking, couldn't they get a copy if they're on the list that they're going to be inspected in the next six months so that there's some, some awareness that it's coming, that their inspection is going to happen? And so that was one of the interesting, and, and that information should be available. And then the other thing was the complaint or concern about gutter cleaning, that it's not done often enough or frequently enough, and there's a lot of leaves built up and, and blocking gutters, and et cetera. So if there's any communication on when gutters are cleaned or how often gutters are cleaned, that would, that would help out as well. Those were the two takeaways I got. Um. Mr. President, can I have? Uh, one thing I forgot um, is um, the Joey Scott, Mr. Scott, that comes from Lenter, offered that this company uh, will provide information or service for residents that um, are not contract with the VMS or, or, or United when they remodel because they are very experts in the our community and knows our roof, I highly recommend it. If you have any problem with the roof, call them first because they have been here for so long. And I, I promise to give this phone number, 714-633-0030, Lenter Company for the Roofing. First call them before you call other people come to the community. Yeah, just a quick comment that Joe Scott did give out as a business card for residents to call him directly, but he was also complimentary to the VMS staff that he works with and everything, and that should be noted. Whenever you get to the next one, I know uh, I've been talking to you tonight about the great idea. Okay, thank you. Let's talk about the next, the next one. Okay. All right, so... Since we are concerned about buying and being able to afford United and so on, many people these days are setting up trusts to buy and to own, I mean, as shareholders. And others don't know anything about it. And a person who already owns can switch into a trust. And so what we thought we would do would be to hold a trust town hall to explain how one can get into a trust, uh, even though they're already the shareholder, how they can change that into a trust, and how if they move somewhere, they can set up a trust. Because a trust really does make a lot of things easier. So we were thinking that would be a, an interesting idea for people. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we'll we'll get an attorney and whatever help we can get from staff. No no help from staff. Will they no, have no a good help brochure? from staff? <laughs> okay, so we'll we'll no help from staff. Okay, we'll 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 find someone. <laughs> Trust. Okay. So I think one of the things with trusts is that if you have a, an existing loan. On a, on a co-op, which many new people don't have. But if you do have an existing loan, you have to go through refinancing to get your property into a trust. You have to get a new loan to get into the trust. You can't go from, if you have a loan currently, you can't move your property into a trust without starting the process of getting a new loan. So that, that might be something we'll need to explain at the town hall. So that will be the March March uh, town hall will be on trusts, trusts in United. Okay, great, thank you. So that's A fourteen B. Entertain a motion to approve supplemental appropriation for United turf reduction projects. So who's going to speak to this, 14B? Kurt Weeman is going to speak to this. He's on Zoom, so if you just give him a minute. Okay. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning, Kurt. Thanks. Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, um, this, um, this is um, a supplemental appropriation just to continue funds uh, left over from last year's budget. This is not new money. So last year, the uh, business plan budgeted a little more than $388,000 for turf removal and landscape modernization. Uh, we had some delays in the design phase of the big project that we're doing, which is a 14,000 square foot passive park. We're removing uh, non-functional turf and replacing it with walkways and benches and trees. It's going to be really nice. But the design end of it took much longer than we expected. We started the design process in September and I just got finalized plans last week and the project is now out to bid. So this is to carry the money over, left over from last year, so we can complete the project. So it's money from last year that we're using now? Correct. It was reserve funds uh, last year that were not completely for the reasons that I just mentioned, and this is uh, the 189,480 is what is left over from last year. I see. And we expect to use most of that for this project. Okay. Well, I'd like to make a motion to approve a supplemental appropriation in the amount of 189,480 to fund a portion of the United Turf Reduction Projects. This is already budgeted money. <laughs> okay, seconded by Allison. Okay. Any discussion, any questions for Kurt? Okay. All those in favor, raise your hand. Okay, it's unanimous. So no cash abstains or? <laughs> okay. Or no, you, you abstain. Okay. Oh, All right. oh you can see. Okay, so that's approved. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Kurt. Next item is 14C, entertain a motion to approve supplemental appropriation for Shepherd's Crook installation. This is that area um, by uh, gate, I think it's gate one, south of gate one to the end on El Toro where the shopping center is. And um, this is, we passed this at our MNC committee and now it's in the board's hands. So, um, so moved. Oh, uh, I second it. It should be read. Oh, okay, and you're right. He, he's 14. here to explain, I mean, a staff. It, um, the resolution, resolution is ordinarily read you're right. first. You're right, you're right. So 14C. We, we didn't have... read the last one. No, we didn't. Five no? of 18. Five of 18. So we don't want to repeat that error. All right, so. 
Do you want to read it, Maggie? Okay, Supplemental Appropriation for Shepherd's Crook Installation. Whereas in May 2017, the City of Laguna Woods issued CUP 1135 governing the replacement of barbed wire fencing with Shepherd's Crook fence. And whereas the 2023 business plan approved by United Board allocates 35000 from the reserve fund to install approximately 300 linear feet of Shepherd's Crook fencing along El Toro Road. And whereas on December 28, 2022 and January 31, 2023, the United MNC and Finance Committees endorsed a recommendation for a supplemental appropriation in the amount of $40,000 to install an additional 400 feet linear feet of Shepherd's Crook along El Toro Road, east of Gate 1. Now, therefore, be it resolved on February 14, 2023, the Board of Directors of the Corporation hereby authorizes a supplemental appropriation in the amount of $40,000 to be funded from the Reserve Fund and resolve a supplemental appropriation is authorized from the Reserve Fund in the amount of $40,000 to be used for this project, resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out the purpose of this corporation. I move this resolution. Okay. Uh, Already moved and seconded. Second, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I have a question from Manuel question. before we, oh. we go to discussion. Uh, Manuel, before? if you pass this one, uh, how much more we needed for United? To finish? Uh, yes. <laughs> Is it, uh, I wanted just to know that uh, how much so I can divide it by things and find the year. Uh, United has uh, approximately 17,000 linear feet left. 17,000 left? Uh, so uh, do you know how much with this, if you include this one, how much we are done? Well, that'll be uh, 700 less. No, no, no. I mean, the whole, so far we did 700. No, no, I'm sorry. I, I don't have that number. I don't know how much we've done over the last yes, that's five, what I five or six years. I don't have that number with me today. Oh, you don't have it. But, but you've been doing approximately 300 a year. So you've probably only done less than 2,000. 2,000. And right. with this one, 2,700. Right. Total. Okay. Thank you so much. So in order to do 17,000, it would be in the millions. In millions, millions yes. In so we cannot afford millions. that. We should definitely this one, yes. But, but we definitely want to look yes. at increasing for, it for next year over what mm -hmm. we currently do. Or more uh, more spaces that is more in danger, like along the El Toro Road or something. Some some spaces is a little bit back. Right. So, uh, yeah. But right. Zara said, that is addressing those areas, right? Yes. 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 Specific. That's the whole purpose. Yeah. Okay. And uh, there has been a motion to approve and a seconded. Uh, any other discussion? Okay. Uh, question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All those in favor, raise your hand. Okay. It's unanimous. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay, item D, entertain a motion to approve exclusive use agreement for common area parking for 901Q, 14D. Um, yeah. I move this motion to approve that exclusive use of the common area parking in cul-de-sac 72. I second it. As listed in the... There is no resolution in the package. No. Did staff want to <laughs> is there? explain that? Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe uh, can you explain this so that everyone's familiar with it? Certainly. So the item before you is the result of a um, member who uh, addressed the board at your last meeting requesting a, uh, the use of a guest space uh, adjacent to their building uh, to accommodate the um, lift that uh, she uses for her wheelchair on her vehicle. So we went out and looked at the location, identified a, a, a parking space in the guest area. There's four or five guest parking spaces 
uh, we're recommending uh, allocating the one closest to the sidewalk area that would make it uh, easily accessible for the wheelchair. Uh, we are uh, suggesting that a exclusive use agreement is the best vehicle by which to accommodate this. It would, it would the agreement, uh, draft agreement that's in your packet specifically states that it's only uh, for this one manor owner, uh, and if the shareholder uh, either moves or sells the unit, then that would uh, void out the agreement for any, and the space would go back to guest parking space. Uh, we, we uh, by practice, we don't uh, include resolutions for items that are not uh, changing a, an operating rule or a policy, so we view this simply as a a temporary arrangement with this particular shareholder, uh, which is why we did not include a resolution for this. Lenny, I have a oh, question. Go ahead, Diane. Yeah. Uh, so this is a, an area that's open typically for anybody to park, Correct. guests, residents, whatever. How are you going to secure it so it's only for that person? We, we're, we're recommending that we stencil the unit number on the parking space. It'll say 901Q. Uh -huh. And then we, we also not, sent out a notice to all of the residents in the cul-de-sac to let them know that this was being considered. Great. And if, can you have like something handicap or anything like that or no? <laughs> it's, it's not a handicap space. It okay. really doesn't uh, meet the criteria for okay. a handicap space. So it would be, uh, you know, we wouldn't recommend that we sign it as handicap. Okay. It's, it's simply a designated space for the shareholder. Okay. And Perfect. everybody I have a question. Uh, now, this person already has a parking space in the Cover parking lot. They have a carport that's Cop assigned yeah. to them. Cop yeah. So this would be a second space for this person. Correct. Okay. Does this person has a car in the carport? Um, they 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 indicated when they spoke last month that they have trouble using the carport space because they can't get the wheelchair ramp, uh, the lift out of the vehicle to use the wheelchair. So is that the carport's going to stay empty when this person is? Uh, is entitled to use this open space? Uh, correct, unless unless a shareholder has a second vehicle that we're not aware of. I, I see. Um, can I so. add, a Pearl, this person came here, doesn't have one leg, and then it's that one, and she was there. Here, you weren't here last year, no, I'm, last I month. know. I, I am for her having this a special space. Yes. However, uh, having another space in the carport that will stay vacant. Uh, it's not. And when you drop it there, she at night she can, somebody can take the car there. So it's not, it's not the issue. The problem is she cannot use her space to go it. We cannot give the space assigned I, I to someone else. Yeah, I, I understand. And I'm all for having her have access okay. to this special arrangement. I was just wondering then what happened to this uh, carport space that she owns? That's, that was my question. Oh, I think Mary had a question. Mary, are you still there? I, I am. So my question um, goes along, I think, with uh, uh, what's being said, is that this then gives her two parking spots for her, for her unit. And um, I understand the problem she's having. So my, here's my concern. My concern is painting the asphalt. I would prefer a sign that says temporary really reserved for and the unit number because once the unit number goes to be sold down the line, even though you're putting it in the documents, that it reverts back. I want to make sure that there's no implication on a resale that a a new owner says, oh, my spot's painted here. Where if a sign says temporary, you know, whatever sign, temporarily reserved for this unit, the sign can easily be removed when the unit is sold. And there's no um, implication that it, that second space goes with the unit. That's my concern. So, so could that be done on the stencil, say, mm -hmm. temporary, Tempor yeah. this number, instead of just the number? It could be, say, temporary. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a good idea, Mary. Thank you. Any other questions? Or I think it's, it's a great job that you guys did to respond to her so quickly, because it was just at the last board meeting that she brought this up. 
and, and so I, I really appreciate your quick response on this. Tony. So, uh, Mr. President, we have a motion on the floor. Can yes. I understand you you're trying to, somebody's making a, an amendment to the motion? No, no. there's no amendment. No, because no. it really, doesn't need a motion, right, does it? Well, the motion is just to approve it. You have to approve it. Yeah. You so just ask if there is no, any is, objection. Is there, a, there is a motion on the floor to approve 14D, right? Yes. It, it was seconded? Yes. Okay. Pearl? Now, I have a question. Now, does the motion uh, says we have a temporary sign on that space? Um, it doesn't, doesn't specify. But that, that's what it, the, it okay, was do you in think the we need to? Okay. We take okay. that. So it doesn't need to be an yeah. amendment. Okay. Okay. All those in favor, uh, raise your hand. Okay, it's unanimous. Okay, 14B. 14E. Um, 14E, entertain a motion to approve the revision to architectural standard 35 solar panels, one story building and buildings with unshared roof space. February initial notification, 28 day notification for member review and comments to comply with civil code. So, Resolution 0123XX, alteration standard section 35, solar panels, one story building and buildings. Whereas the Board of Directors of the United Lagunowitz Mutual Board recognizes the need to amend standards and create new standards as necessary, and whereas the Board recognizes the need to revise standard 35 solar panels, one-story buildings, now therefore be it resolved March 14th, 2023, that the Board hereby adopts standard 35 solar panels, one-story buildings as attached to the official meeting minutes and resolve further that the resolution 010861 adopted April 8, 2008 is hereby superseded in its entirety and no longer in effect. Resolve further that the mutual consent processing fee for solar panel installation is to be calculated based on 4.7 hours charged at the current bill rates and is to be applied at the time an application is approved and resolve further the mutual consent processing fee for solar panel installation request is set at the initial rate of 223 for 2023 and will be adjusted annually with the adoption of the new bill rates and resolve further the mutual consent processing time for solar panel installation requests is to be completed within 45 days from receipt of a complete application and resolve further Further, that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution as written. I move this resolution. I second. Second. Well, I have a question about it. Um, so, regarding the uh, maybe uh, Lord Berger, are you going to answer these questions? Okay. So. Um, the, it, it talks about the the initial rate of 223 for 2023. What it, what does that mean? Um, is that the rate of renting the solar panel, or what, what is that? I will be happy to explain that. But I may may I ask a, a, a re, uh, or may I place a request to read a second resolution that's associated with this action that we are presenting as well, and that has to do with the fee schedule. Okay, so where where is that in our package? Fourteen E. Yes, it is. Okay, solar application processing fee. Whereas alteration and variance requests require significant staff time for proper processing, including research, report preparation, presentation to the appropriate committee and board, and whereas in order to offset a portion of the administrative costs associated with processing variance requests, which is often followed by multiple resubmittals and can be followed by an appeal to the board in a accordance with Resolution 01-2027, and whereas the following revisions are approved. One, 
The solar installation application fee is revised to 22. Three, 223, and whereas the new alteration fee schedule better aligns the fees with the administrative time it takes to process each task. Now, therefore, be it resolved March 14, 2023, to partially offset administration costs associated with processing alteration and variance requests. The board of directives of this corporation hereby revise the alteration and inspection fees as attached to the official minutes of this meeting and the new alteration fee schedule will be adopted. And resolve further that resolution 01-1922 adopted February 12, 2019 is hereby superseded and canceled and resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out the resolution. I move this resolution. Um, so we have a reduction from $700 down to $223. What, you know, what was that about? So uh, if I may um, uh, answer the, both questions, the, first que the, the initial question regarding the uh, bill rate as well as the question that you have presented. If uh, you can look at attachment number seven of your uh, packet, it has a uh, detailed um, matrix yeah. mm -hmm. on how we arrived at the $237. Uh, what, what is being proposed is that currently, the way we are handling solar applications, it is based on uh, the value of the construction, which uh, most of them exceed the $10,000 mark, which automatically makes those a $700 fee. Uh, we had received uh, uh, complaints uh, from uh, applicants as well as board members that that seemed excessive. Once yeah. we looked at that and we analyzed the time that we spend processing these applications, uh, we believe that the uh, uh, currently the $223 <coughs> amount will cover uh, the uh, uh, staff time for this. In regards to the bill rates, it, 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 it refers to the chargeable bill, bill rates that are adopted every year. Mm -hmm. And uh, what the way that it is worded will allow for those adjustments to take place without having to come back uh, and make and go through the uh, approval process, as that is a minor adjustment to uh, that fee. So uh, my other question is: so when they do these solar panels, how does that affect the roofing? You know, I mean, are they responsible for? that section of the roof. <laughs> they are, and I do have a very brief presentation for you uh, that may answer some of those questions. Okay. Tony. Tony. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Just like to let you know, if you, if you go to Home Depot or Costco, you may be approached by one of their employees to try to sell you on the solar system. But every one of those companies want you to get into a lease program and I'm going to ask Mr. Mejia why we don't want a lease program for solar. Thank you. And I'll be happy to address that as well. Uh, if I can go through the brief presentation, yeah. uh, and then I will answer both of those questions. Um, uh, if you can go to the next slide. Thank you. So um, some of the things, and as you know, the uh, ACSC uh, committee and this board um, has a goal of reviewing all of the, uh, the current standards and update them or, or review them to see if they're still applicable, uh, update them with either new language or new requirements, this one being one of them, uh, and, and quite important uh, because this is one that, uh, one, we have a shot clock that we need to adhere to, and the other one is to uh, correct a discrepancy, which was the initial reason why uh, this uh, standard and the next standard that we're going to see uh, uh, were considered for revision, and the uh, and the reason for that revision is that one one of the standards uh, st specifically stated that uh, uh, leasing of solar panels was not allowed, where the other standard was silent. Uh, so um, some of the uh, house cleaning uh, uh, things that we did with this standard is. Uh, to remove 
all of the general requirements. It's a long list of requirements. And the standard one was adopted for that purpose so that if there are any revisions to uh, the general requirements, uh, that uh, standard one gets changed and automatically applies to all of the standards that are adopted. Uh, this had not been reviewed, so it still had uh, that list of standards. By removing them and just referring to standard number one, uh, it will make reading uh, and the content of this standard much simpler to follow. Uh, the uh, other um, item that we looked at in detail is how to address the impacts to the roof and, and uh, who is responsible for uh, its maintenance, how do they uh, make sure that any penetrations that make into the roof, uh, one, maintain the, the, uh, the warranty that we have for that roof and that it meets uh, also uh, mutual standards. That language uh, has been added. There are a number of sections that have been enhanced uh, to specifically deal with those actions. There is a red line version of the standard that uh, shows all of those details. Um, and I, may, I can look at address any one of those specifically, but for simplicity of this presentation, I just wanted to tell you that uh, roofing requirements and the space in between the panels uh, were the major enhancements uh, that we have implemented with this revision. The uh, other one is on the leasing of so solar panels. As I stated previously, one of the standards specifically prohibited that. The other one was silent. Uh, we are now proposing that both standards uh, prohibit the uh, leasing of solar panels. And the main reason for that is that uh, the, the, the leased panels do not really belong to uh, the shareholder nor the mutual. So should anything happen, it becomes uh, quite laborious to uh, have them remove those panels, have to follow the same rules uh, uh, of the contract that the shareholder signed, but the mutual was not a part of that. Uh, I believe that was the main reason why it was prohibited in one, but it was left out of the other one because it they didn't probably, or they forgot it was a previously adopted standard. But that is the main reason. It is that the leased solar panels are not owned by neither the shareholder nor the mutual. So next slide, please. So um, as, as a second resolution was read to specifically address the uh, uh, change uh, to the uh, solar application fee and to move that into a flat rate. And the only time that that will change is with the adoption of the new chargeable bill rates that each board approves uh, uh, every year. As you can see, uh, for the current 2023 uh, year, uh, it is proposed to be $223. Uh, you saw before how we arrived at that number based on uh, the time that we spend processing those applications. And that includes processing the uh, uh, common area use agreement to allow for that installation to take place. So you should have received also a revised um, alteration fee schedule uh, with red lines. Uh, after reviewing uh, this with the city, uh, the city indicated that, uh, as with their request to not refer to mutual consensus permits, that we also remove all references to permits from, from our uh, uh, alteration fee schedule. And, and more importantly, uh, they indicated that making a statement as to when a building permit is required should be left up to the city to uh, uh, to decide that. So with that, it doesn't change any of the uh, fees. Essentially, what we, what we are doing is cleaning up uh, the fee schedule to remove all references to permits or whether a permit is required or not. Instead, we refer to, uh, as stated, if you look at the red line version of this, uh, at the uh, top of the alteration schedule, we refer our shareholders to contact the city uh, to see if a building permit is required. 
I'm available to answer any questions that you may have. And I hope that I did answer the questions that you had asked. Thank you, President Ross. If you look on that last slide that uh, Mr. Mejia put up there, uh, the right, you see the big X on there. Obviously, uh, I've worked pretty closely with him on the uh, architectural committee. And there's a new sheriff in town down there in Laguna Woods City. And, and I guess he is why we've had to change that. And maybe he can explain that to you. Thank you. And, and, and that is correct. We have a new building official that um, uh, is reading all of the requirements uh, and uh, going through uh, the building permitting process. We work closely with the city. It's a partnership. Uh, we want to make sure that moving forward that there are no delays uh, when we're processing and the shareholders are processing their uh, alterations. And I believe this is going to go a long ways uh, to helping with that, as there's not going to be a misunderstanding as to when a uh, building permit is required or not. Thank you for explanation. That's uh, clear many of my questions, but one question that still I am puzzling is um, with inflation and everything goes up, we are going from 700 processing fee back to 200. We are talking almost about 500 down. So should I raise my concern to review all processing fee in the VMS? Because I am, I am now a little bit concerned about other processing fee. And uh, should we a review? Should we something? Because now technology is more coming, maybe less work of people involved or many things. Uh, the difference is too big from 700 coming to the 220. Yeah, so we're, we're basically, we're, we're just allowed to cover our costs. That's yes, why we come us. up with these fees. Yeah. But 700 would be way more than our cost to process the fee. No. That's, so that's yeah, the I, I understand that this is the cost that we are charging right. 200. Right. And, so, and Mr. President, as a future action item, we, we plan on presenting to you a report similar to the one that we did for the solar installations. Yes. Reviewing uh, the uh, uh, Mutual consent fees, not the permit fees. Thank you. That's what I want to hear. Thank uh, you so much. And, and reevaluate the uh, amount that uh, it has been charged. Thank some you. of them may be lower, some may be higher, but again, the purpose is to cover uh, staff time in reviewing those. And this is based on 2023, you know, the, the, what you think the costs are for 2023. That could change next year? Um, you know, that that, that is correct. If next year the new chargeable rates go up, mm -hmm. then this fee will go up proportionally. If it goes down, then it will be reduced proportionally as well. Mm -hmm. So they're um, basically we're not we're telling the members that they can't lease their solar based on this policy. So they're going to have to purchase a solar system. Are we recommended recommending any companies to do that or are they on their own? Um, we are not recommending any companies uh, to do any installations. There are a number of qualified companies uh, as long as they are properly licensed and follow the procedures that we are establishing, uh, any qualified company uh, will be allowed to make those installations. Okay, and, and uh, so, so um, they're basically by buying their solar systems, they're gonna have to expend, you know, six or eight or $10,000 in addition to this processing fee, what, whatever the cost of the solar system is. Yeah, I, I just had a question back on the roofs. <laughs> so I know I live in a Seville, and um, the um, patio that's an open area was closed in, and then I was responsible as the owner who took over to pay whatever it cost to roof that particular area, which was like, I think like $500. It was a long time ago that uh, the roof was done. But so what does happen with that area with the um, solar panel because, I mean, and plus it might even cause leaks or something or what, I mean, is there, they have some responsibility in that? So the shareholder is fully responsible for its maintenance 
its removal and the restoration of the roof to a condition that meets mutual standards and any warranty requirements that we may have on that roof. And so, so if there is a problem with the roof and they have to come in and redo the roof, they would be responsible for whatever it takes to, to fix that part of it? That, that is correct. If, the, if that building is scheduled to be re-roofed, it will be re-roofed re in its entirety. But if the removal of the solar panels uh, requires that a portion of that roof be removed and replaced, it will have to meet the requirements of uh, this standard. Okay. Okay. So, was there a motion for this one? Yeah. Um, okay, and it was second. Or it was seconded already. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, all those in favor, raise your hand. Okay. It's unanimous. Okay. Do we need to go through the same thing for item F? It's two-story buildings, right? So do we need to read the same resolution or, or there's a resolution for that different than E, 14F? Or can we just go I to think approve we know it? That. Mr. President? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Cash, did you want to say? Yeah, I have a, a two-story building. One of the two may not want, the upstairs guy may not want to put the roof uh, solar panel on his roof mm -hmm. because he's the one who is going to have to deal with any leaks. If the ground floor wants to put this thing mm -hmm. on his roof, I mean, we have to have some kind of resolution. We can't just say that a two-story building will be similar. May, so let, let's read may I read the resolution? Thank yeah, go you. ahead. It is 14F. It is a pink page. Okay. 15 14F. It's a pink page. 15 of 42. Okay. Yeah. This one. Okay. Uh, resolution 0123X, X, alteration standard section 42, solar panels, two-story buildings. Whereas the Board of Directors of the United Laguna Woods Mutual Board recognizes the need to amend standards and create new standards as necessary, and whereas the Board recognizes the need to revise standard 42, solar panels, two-story buildings, now therefore be it resolved March 14, 2023, that the Board hereby adopts standard 42 solar panels, two-story buildings, as attached to the official meeting minutes, and resolve further that resolution 01-14-130 adopted October 23, 2014 is hereby superseded in its entirety and no longer in effect. And resolve further that the mutual consent processing fee for solar panel installation is to be calculated based on 4.7 hours charged at the current bill rates and is to be applied at the time of application is approved and resolve further the mutual consent processing fee for solar panel installation request is set in the initial rate of 223 for 2023 and will be adjusted annually with the adoption of the new bill rates and resolve further the mutual consent processing time for solar panel installation request is to be completed within 45 days from a receipt of a complete application and resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution as written. I move this resolution. Okay, seconded? Allison. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? So, Cash, you had a point about that. So, did you want to raise that issue again? No? Any, any other questions? Any other questions? No? Okay. Anyone? Well, mm -hmm. I, the only question I would have is everybody has to agree, or is it just one part of the, you know, there's multi units? How, how does that work? Yeah. yeah, that's a good question. I also have a, a, a brief presentation for you that may answer your question. So as with the previous uh, standard, uh, 
the first two slides are identical as we did the same uh, types of changes uh, where we incorporated uh, specific language for uh, with the roof and the spacing. Uh, it is with the third slide that we uh, differentiate between the previous standard and this one, which applies to essentially the allocation of space uh, for uh, flat roofs of these multi-unit buildings. And um, can you go to the next one, please? So w with this, with the revisions to the standard, we do not recommend it, we do not entertain any changes to the way that space is allocated for those multi-units. I have a few slides that will follow just, and they were attached to your uh, uh, report, uh, just to refresh your memory as to how space is allocated for these units. Again, the idea is to provide equal space to every uh, manner. And for those who choose not to install solar panels, that space will remain unused, as it will not be fair to increase the space for another, from another manner. Uh, and who knows if a year or two years later that shareholder will want to add solar panels at that point. So that will remain un unused. Um, so the first one, first layout, uh, if you can go to the next one, please. It, it's a straight allocation, again, equal space for every manor. Uh, this is for a six unit uh, building, uh, your castle in that style of uh, uh, building. The next one uh, is your uh, Castilla or La Brisa. Uh, type of allocation. That one is not as clear as the previous one, but again, the, uh, uh, the area that is allocated is uh, similar for each uh, manner, uh, even though they are arranged in different shapes and throughout what's available out there. It should be noted that uh, those space allocations do not take into account uh, any structures that may be there. Uh, such as either uh, AC units or vents, and there are specific requirements for that. The standard addresses those requirements, and it is the responsibility of the shareholder and the uh, solar contractor to come up with a solar layout appropriate for the space that's available uh, to that manner. Uh, next one, please. This one's a lot simpler, similar to the first one. Next one, please. Uh, this one has more units, but again, the idea is to allow a, uh, a similar uh, area for each one of the manors. I believe that's the last one. Uh, and similar to uh, the previous standard, the same uh, fee is proposed uh, uh, for uh, these um, two-story buildings as uh, the processing time is the same, whether it is for one-story building or two-story buildings. Next one, please. And the same changes are proposed since there are two separate standards. Each one will have its own associated fee, but the fee is the same, and the changes to the uh, fee schedule are also uh, identical. Next one. Thank you. You allow, or, or is this considering, uh, you know, th those type of units to put something on their roofs <laughs> that are independent from their, the other parties? You know, like a Seville has four units. I mean, would Correct. that be considered in one of these? So that will be considered, uh, again, it's a proportional space. We have the guidelines as to how to allocate the space. And the roof will be divided proportionally among the, uh, in this case, the four manors, and they will get one fourth of the available space, following the same guidelines for either one of the two standards, uh, where you have minimum uh, spacing requirements, so uh, and roofing requirements. So they will get a proportional area of that uh, of that building. And somehow the the contractor is able to wire it so that that person gets the savings of the solar. You know? so we work very closely with the contractors uh, and the shareholders, and our inspection team uh, will be there to make sure that the area uh, is what has been approved. We also review the plan that they submit 
and approve that plan as far as the layout is concerned. Great, thank you. Yeah. You know, some of the uh, people may face with uh, tree shades on the portion they have. So what is the outcome? What is the alternative you have in mind for them? So there isn't. Unfortunately, so their portion may not get enough sunlight. Unfortunately, uh, to be fair with all the shareholders, and um, shading is something that we'll have to deal with at some point during the day. They will get some sunlight, maybe not as much as the next door unit. Uh, then, and the uh, solar contractor will have to uh, include that analysis into their projections for solar production. When you have um, when you have multiple units, let's say eight or twelve units, and you have four solar panels, and and they have to be removed when the roof has to be. Re-roofed. Who 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 who's responsible for make taking those solar panels and removing them so the roofers can do the roofing? How how is that shared amongst the the it, people who live? It is an alteration, and the shareholder that owns those solar panels is responsible for the removal and reinstallation of those after the roof has been installed. They need to coordinate that with our. Roofing contractor, of course, and our roofing contractor may end up uh, doing the final sealing of those penetrations, but the work itself uh, will have to be performed by the uh, shareholder. Okay. Yes. Oh, well, let's go to Maggie. I'm oh, sorry. She had it. Should I read 14F, which goes with the application fee? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, please. Okay. Um, Resolution, this is 14F, page 39 of 42, it's pink. Uh, resolution, solar application processing fee. Alteration and variance requests require significant staff time for proper processing, including research, report preparation, presentation to the appropriate committee on the board and board, whereas in order to offset a portion of the administrative costs associated with processing variance requests, which is often followed by multiple resubmittals and can be followed by an appeal to the board in accordance with Resolution 01-2027, and whereas the following revisions are approved. One, the solar installation application fee is revised to 2023, 2023, no, Oh, 223. <laughs> Whereas the new alteration fee schedule better aligns the fees with the administrative time it takes to process each task. Now, therefore, be it resolved March 14, 2023, to partially offset administrative costs associated with processing alteration and variance requests, the Board of Directors of this corporation who revised the alteration and inspection fees as attached to the official minutes of this meeting and the new alteration fee schedule will be adopted and resolved further that Resolution 01-1922, adopted February 12, 2019, is hereby superseded and canceled and resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out the resolution. I move this resolution. Second. Second. Any questions? Yes. Okay. Uh, from Mr. Bob. If, especially those uh, that they have four, and if one resident doesn't want it at all be responsible or pay or for anything, can the other one use her space? I mean, you said everyone has one fourth of the space. That's totally understandable. But if the other person be agree that I'm not going to use my space and you're welcome to use it, mm -hmm. I mean, can they make an agreement and sign it? And um, have you think about that? Staff is not recommending that uh -huh. as it will not be fair uh, to that shareholders that owns that unit and has that space allocated to them as they can change their mind in the future and they may end up using it. And as I mentioned before, that space will remain unused um, uh, to, to allow one uh, manner to have more solar panels than the other one 
uh, will not be equitable to all of the uh, shareholders of that building. Okay, thank you. Okay. I see a little uh, problem in a two-story building and the ground floor unit wants to put this roofing uh, panels. Uh, the upstairs person may be faced with leaks, etc., and he may object. Hmm. I don't want to do this. Then what is your solution? So the uh, language that was added to the standard uh, covers uh, those uh, incidental issues. And the way that it is covered is that if it is a roof that's under warranty, uh, that it is required that they go to the uh, uh, roofing installer that has installed that that's under warranty to preserve the warranty. The work itself has to meet uh, roofing standards to prevent any of those penetrations from leaking. So if it's done properly, there should not be any leaks. Should any leaks develop, the shareholder will be responsible for that damage as is with any alteration that is approved uh, for any of the manners. So if there's any leak later on, and the ground, store, ground floor unit has this on the roof, he is responsible throughout the ex life of that solar panel. If it is determined that that was the cause of the leak, they will be responsible for that. company so that it gets the seal of approval or whatever that it's it's done right and it's uh, not going to affect the roof that's and that too impression. that too has been covered by the standard it requires that inspection it does good. But by the roofing uh, manufacturer to preserve the warranty mm -hmm. okay good okay. Um, was there a motion on that? yeah there was Maggie and I seconded. I recommend you ask for the vote for E first and then F second. 14 E. And 14 E. 14 G. G. Oh, no, 14, uh, no, 14 E. E. Oh, I thought we did it. E. That's the two story. Both. E is two-story. Yeah, we just did the two-story. Oh, okay, then we want to do F. 14F. Oh, well, now 14G, right? Yeah. That's, okay. that's the harassment. Okay. Yeah. So at 14G, entertain a motion to amend the United Anti-Harassment Policy February Initial Notification 28-Day Notification for Member Review and Comments to Comply with Civil Code. This is our new anti-harassment policy. Uh. And so, would you read it, Maggie? Uh, yes, I just have a question. Uh, do you have on record us passing both E and F? Good, thank you. Okay, resolution, this is page 11 of 12 for 14G, it's pink. Amend the United Anti-Harassment Policy. Its mutual board of directors has recognized the need to amend the harassment policy to set forth guidelines for harassment complaints received by the board. Now, therefore, be it resolved March 14, 2023, that the board of directors of this corporation hereby adopt the amended harassment policy as attached to the official minutes of this meeting and resolve further that resolution 0118102 adopted September 28, 2018, is hereby superseded and canceled, and resolved further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out the purpose of this resolution. I move this resolution. Second. Okay, it's approved. This is just for initial notification. There's on 28 day 20. review. Oh, okay, it goes to 28 days. Okay. Okay, director comments. No, uh, director, we have 
which Paul sent it, is H, is for uh, is the recommendation for private loan research ad hoc committee appointments. It is, it is there. Uh, this was the addendum to the agenda that was issued on Friday. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And if you don't mind, I just read this one. Uh, this is recommend recommendation, review and approve the private loan list research ad hoc committee appointment. And we're supposed to pick four uh, from eight people. Um, first of all, to not raise any question why this is this one, it suppose from VMS goes to here somehow somehow felt in the crack, so is added later. So it's not my fault or anybody. Um, uh, we are supposed to pick up four, and we did it in the finance committee. We discussed, we review all of them. However, the reason it comes here, one of them that we pick up, Manny Robledo, we found that uh, he is a member of the uh, uh, VMS, uh, representative from United to VMS, and um, although although he's good and he can come, we thought maybe we shall we just uh, choose um, residents, mm -hmm. and that's the reason is here. So only approve these three plus one more, and um, if if board decided with that. Uh, so I am reading this one that uh, review and approve the private loan research ad hoc committee appointment. Eric Carson, Richard. LaPointe La and Robert Tucker. Uh, on December 13, the Board of Directors approved resolution 01-2284 to establish a private loan research ad hoc committee charter. Following the board decision, a committee was sent out to residents requesting that those interested in beginning in becoming members of the ad hoc committee send a three to four sentences email stating their professional background to financial service department by Friday, January 20. So we just received them, we reviewed them, and we suggested these three. So the fourth one, um, as we discussed, if board decided, you can see is all added to your agenda. Um, um, maybe uh, Mr. Ken Benson, is a good one. Uh, he has a 35 years background on that, but uh, we are open to any suggestion that other people wants to add. Point of parliamentary procedure. I didn't, I didn't vote for this in the agenda. Pardon? Yeah. This was not this part is, this of the is agenda endorsement. that we voted on today. No, they it is in. approved the agenda. Okay. It wasn't it, it, on the agenda, it's okay. not approved. Okay. Can you listen, please? Don't talk to me. Talk to the chair. Okay, Mr. Chair, endorsement, like all other endorsement, when we go to the um, prep meeting, all the endor endorsement is just the name. Finance endorsement, uh, 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 landscape endorsement. This is endorsement from finance. I called, and then somehow, maybe Shivan can address or Paul, um, uh, the CFO didn't on time prepare and send it. It's not our fault. It's supposed to be go through a staff as endorsement to here. So endorsement does not need to be mentioned because uh, in the uh, prep meeting because it comes from committee directly to the agenda. And that's all, all endorsement coming. We didn't talk about any of this that we prove as endorsement in the agenda. So that's about that. That's ignoring, it's ignoring the fact that when you ask for an approval of the agenda, it wasn't on the agenda, I'm sorry. Uh, you cannot understand what I'm saying. I, well, well, my question is, I was at the finance committee and this was discussed, Yes. but that was on the 31st. Correct. And so the agenda prep already happened. Now, why? Did it not get to us between ask, now ask and then? CFO. I mean, that's a long time. I, I would yeah. like to clarify two things. One, yeah. this was issued as an addendum to the agenda. So yeah. this was issued and noticed properly as part of the agenda. Secondly, uh, it was a mistake by staff. It oh. did not get transmitted as it should have. 
Okay. And we and so, realize that. And well, I, I just want to understand how that works. So how many days is it? I mean, you count the weekend? Or Diane, <laughs> yeah. what, in terms of posting the agenda? No, about getting us this information. Sta it was a staff error. Oh, okay. So it was that's issued fine. Friday after, Friday late, late morning. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's fine. I just want to understand how it goes. And that, uh, you know, these uh, candidates were approved in that last finance committee meeting. And so you did all that then. Yes, I, only yeah. many we wanted to take Which off. I was at the VMS yes. meeting and there was a problem with yes. that. So I know that happened. Yes. Yeah. So and maybe that was a delay because the that no, meeting was no, late. that was. It should supposed to come like this to that. Okay, all right. That's all I have. I mean, I'm not. not okay. I'm not in disagreement. It's just that okay. sometimes you need to have some time to look at it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the, the, we we didn't have much time to review it. Um, so I don't even have a copy of it myself. But anyway, um, so what does the board want to do with this? Um, okay, since uh, since finance. Okay, you have that one. Okay. Since finance reviewed as uh, some directors was there, uh, we are um, we are approving. We, we are asking to approve this one, including uh, Ken Benson as a fourth one. And removing, and removing Mr. Um, uh, Ro Manny Robel Robel Robledo Robledo. <laughs> I do have another question. So Ken Benson is on another ad hoc committee right yes, now. Yes, and he's and, very knowledgeable. Yeah, but I mean, so is that something that you you want you don't want to have another person? You, you can. It's, it's in front of you. Put it. But we we found him. Um, he's great. I mean, he's. I mean, he's, he's very per knowledgeable. If he can have, and the other ad hoc is probably done. We're just in the process to send it to the board. So then that is already done by this week. So. We thought we use this amazing knowledge that he has for 35 years to his. If I am not against, if you want to put someone else, put it. But we wanted to find based on the knowledge that people have. Mm -hmm. So, so you're suggesting? So I'm suggesting board approve Eric Carlson, Carlson, Richard Lapointe, Lapointe, Robert Tucker, and Ken okay. Benson. I read this. I made a motion. Okay. To approve. Okay, I second it. So instead of Manny, Ken Benson. Yes. Okay. Um, it's been seconded. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, ask any, for any, vote. Any, so any this subject. Any discussions about this? This will be the vote for the amendment to yes. Ken Benson. Yes. To Ken. Thank correct. you. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the motion is for accepting these four people for ad hoc committee. Oh. Eric Carson, I'm reading again the motion. I'll move a motion to accept Eric Carson, Richard Lapointe, Robert Tucker, and Ken Benson for the ad hoc committee. That's the motion. Okay. Were there any other people that were qualified other than these four? Uh, they, they, they all, if you read it, is 20 years, 20. We, we choose it. I don't know any of them. I just choose based on information, very, very high level information. Okay. So yeah, we've al we already selected the four individuals. Manny Robledo just couldn't be on it because he's a VMS board member and somebody objected to that, which is fine. And so you're basically just replacing Manny with Ken Benson. That's it. And that's the motion. Is yes, the, right. that's the motion. And, the, and this would ordinarily have been on the consent calendar. Ordinarily, yes, but That is correct, know. yes. Yes. yes, so that's that supposed to be. It's yes. not. It's just numbered differently. Mm -hmm. Correct. Because Correct. of the late edition. Correct. Correct. Right. That's Correct. it. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, any if you other, ask if there is any objection. Yeah, any other questions? Okay. Let's go to the vote. All those in favor of the motion, raise your hand. Okay. All those opposed. I had it on. Uh, yes. Oh, oh, you're yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Also, any opposed? Okay. Well, I so abstained because I don't know. It's approved. Yeah. Um, Pearl abstained. Oh, Pearl Thank abstained. You. Okay. 
Okay, we are ready for uh, actually now director comments. Any director comments before we go to committee reports? Yes, I want to make, um, I think, I want to just suggest the more I will be acting in the board professionally, the more residents be interested to watch us and knows what's going on. For a while, at least in many codesac that I am in my walk every day, I hear for a while they didn't want to watch because it was very, very wild and not controlled. Thankfully, this year is more control and they are watching. However, still some directors wants to attack and screen and long hands pointing to each other. I think it's, it's proper in this voice be disagree or disagreement and say whatever you want it as an agreement, but reaction and have not professionally screaming is make resident again scare and not to watch us. So I am asking, please keep the professional manner here. It is a board. I know we are, we are, we are really professional here in the board, and let's keep it professional. Thank you so much. Lenny, I have a comment. So anyway, my comment is that uh, Lenny <laughs> makes the statement in the beginning of the meeting of how he's going to control it, but when a board member is speaking. You need to stop when somebody is interrupting. It happened to me and it happened to Anthony. I mean, you've got to stand up for that. I mean, that's why I'm battling with her because she interferes. She had no right to say who is going to be assigning those positions. Maybe you could, but I mean, even Anthony used to say, he's not responsible for assigning positions. It's the people that want them. There's disagreement, and, 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 and so I try to recognize people when they raise their hands, and if multiple people are raising their hands, I try my best to, to let the people speak when they're, when they're recognized, but what I want to avoid is debates or accusations or, uh, uh, you know, people yelling at each other, and I, I just want to keep the decorum as best as possible. I'm just asking you to... Pay attention to somebody butting in, you know, when okay. they have the floor. Fair enough. Thank you. Diane. I'm Maggie. Yes, as, as the one furthest out in left field, uh, <laughs> I'd like you to look this way first sometimes rather than that way first. It's natural to look to your right, but I'm asking you to look over this way first a couple of times. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, on a lighter note, I have a, uh, uh, I think uh, Director Escari had mentioned, one, uh, one uh, resident at the um, forum brought up the fact that uh, she has requested many times in the past to put the larger numbers in the buildings because they cannot see in the evening. And that's the first time I really uh, paid attention, driving around. And in the evening, it's very difficult to see the numbers in the building. So I think we should take that very seriously. And another thing is my personal thing. We are all interested in keeping our property values, and we want our village to look attractive. But as you enter um, the gate, all the colors are very elderly colors. Colors of the buildings are very neutral in a good way depressing in not so good way. So I really like to see a little bit more a brightening up of our whole village to make it more attractive. And also I think it would be more cheerful for the people that live here and bring more life and atmosphere to this. Uh, so I would like to request to maybe to, uh, for us to offer wider variety, a little bit different uh, additional color charts. Yeah, I, when, when I was on the board last, yeah. I think we had a little committee. Yes, I, that, I think we should that, really take it seriously. That came up with different paint colors, and, and, and that was past, and that was several years ago. So, <laughs> yeah, the, different that colors? Was, yeah, there's maybe several we, different paint color options now. Maybe we need to brighten up a little bit more. Well. <laughs> The other thing is, is that the resident did say that, and I would like an answer from staff, is on the, um, on the large signs, because there's some buildings that have them, 
some don't. Mm -hmm. And so maybe someone from staff give us an update on where that that project is, because I, I have no idea. My understanding is that it was stopped by the either oh, the stopped. then board, but I can get further information for right. you. Okay, yeah, it would be appreciated. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, any other questions? Or, okay, so let's go to commit, commit. Oh, cash. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Mr. President, we all should look at time as well. Looks like we are just making comments after comments. Some of them sometimes doesn't make sense. Everyone should be aware of the time. Thank you. Yeah, that's true. Good point, Cash. Okay, report of the Finance Committee. Try and be as brief as possible. Okay. Please. Uh, we have a, a finance committee on January 31st, 2020. And this is the report from that. And these are all from December 31st. In the first slide, you can see through the reporting period of December 31st, 2022, Total revenue for United was 47.8 million compared to expenditures 49.1 million, resulting in net expenses of 2.6 million. 47.8 thousand, not million. 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 K, million. you have to put a 0030 oh, on the top of that. Okay. Uh, we, we can we cannot live with forty seven thousand in a month. Uh, could we have a, a slide two, please? Thank you. In finance, as usual, we keep a close eyes on the operating portion of our financial result. The operating fund, without a depreciation, showed an operating surplus four hundred thirty four thousand through the reporting period. This chart shows how much of our revenue went into operation with 22.5 million coming in from assessment and 1.6 million coming from non-assessment revenue. This is compared to operating expenditures of 23.7 million without depreciation. Uh, can we have slide three, please? Thank you so much. This next chart uh, takes the full income statement and compares those results to budget. We can see that United ended the period better than budget by 987,000, almost 1 million, when combining both operating and reserve saving. Um, can we have a slide four, please? This slide is better, is more visual, and you can see the most significant variance from budget the first one is coming from employee compensation, $1.8 million, favorable variance resulting primary, primarily in M&C and landscape service, largely due to open positions. And the next one is material and surplus with 528,000, again, favorable variance resulting primarily from less materials used inside the mutual than anticipated. And if you see the next bar, which is green again, no, stay there, <laughs> thank you. United and Telephone is 409,000 favorable. And this is uh, for lower, um, uh, resulting from lower residence uh, sewer rates and went into effect in July, 2022. And of course you can see two red one, the first one is loss on sale and trade, which is 1.4. Unfortunately, vari uh, variance resulted from the sale of discretionary investment. And as, you, as I explained in the beginning, all of those invested in the treasury bill, and you will not see this red again. And the next one is outside service is uh, 328,000, and that's uh, unfavorable variance primarily resulted from higher outside expenses 
of a sharp bed maintenance than anticipated due to open position within landscape. And can we have this uh, slide five, please? This is a pie chart that is more visual and you can see. On this pie chart, we show non-assessment revenue earned to that um, is 1.9 million, excluding the loss on sale or trade. If you include those loss, then this number will become that 507,000. And uh, you can see that it's, this chart is um, organized by category, starting with our largest revenue generating categories, um, fee and charges to residents, followed by investment interest income, laundry, lease processing fee, uh, resale processing fee, and so on. If we can get a slide six, please. On this pie chart, we see the expenses to date is $49 million, showing that our largest category of expenses, of course, is employee compensation. And that's uh, followed by property tax and outside service, utilities, insurance, materials, and supplies, and so on. And if we go to the next, a uh, slide is better because we take, in this slide, the difference between previous one is we take the property tax out of here because uh, property tax residents pay and directly goes to the cities. So this, what you see exactly um, shows how your money is spent, um, the money that you pay as HOFE. Um, so the only difference you can see is employee compensation now become 37% compared to outside services, 27%, and go forth. And can we go to slide eight, please? Thank you. So in this slide, you can see our fund balance are shown here. The contingency fund, um, the contingency fund balance on December 31st, 2022 was 1 1.1 million. The reserve fund balance on December 31st, 2022 was 16.8 million. Contribution and investment revenue collected total 9.7, while expenditures were 12 million. The property tax fund balance on December 31st, 2022 was, of course, its deficit negative uh, 681,000. And contribution and investment revenue collected total 12.5 million, while expenditures were 13.1 million. Can we get the? Yes, this is this is more visual. We can see we compare these to historical fund balance for the past five years on this chart, which have averaged 19.7 millions. And number 10. And this is the last one. We have a slide here to show resale history uh, from 2020 to 2022. Through December 31st, 2022, United resales total 412 units, which is 96 resale lower than per year year for the same time period. The average year to date resale price for a United Mutual Manor was 363,000, which is 57,000 higher than per year year for the same period time. And um, this was the uh, treasury report. And I, for number three, reser, um, sorry, for number four, which is uh, for investment ad hoc committee, I have to tell that we are almost at the end. We wrap it up with a policy which will be presented to the board by next board meeting. And the um, board can review that one and vote and adopt it, that one. Uh, and then, uh, of course, you just voted here for the uh, private loan uh, committee that I will give uh, more detailed information about that on next month. Thank you so much. Oh, Mary, oh, Mary. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. So I just have a quick question, and maybe Siobhan, you could answer this. So on the slide that talked about property tax, I do understand that 
the unit property taxes are a pass through basically you collect them you hold them you pay them but where on the in the expenses are the common area property taxes or do we not is that on GRF uh, common area uh, is GRF yeah the common area is GRF yes. um, um, financials is that yes. true okay perfect that was as I asked I, I realized it. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Thank that you. That was my question. Thank you. Uh, Meg. Point of clarification. Uh, green areas in United are common area for United. But the all the amenities, the clubhouses and things are GRF. So, so it's the the landscaping around your place and to your neighbor's place and up the hill. All of those where the homes are, that is united. But but the clubhouses are for, for those. He was talking about property tax. Property tax. Yes. Yes. The the green spaces around United are part of property tax. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure. I think the property tax is based on your floor plan, your your footprint. And, and that's what the property tax is based on. It's not based on the common area. So, yes, you, so United Common Area uh, is not taxed? I, I don't know. I'd have to ask the financial experts about that. Because, I okay. I don't know. Architectural controls. Director. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, as you can see from... Uh, the uh, extensive presentation from Mr. Mejia that although we didn't have any requests last time for alterations, uh, we did meet to discuss in depth these changes and the pro not I say a problem, but we have a new a new guy in town down there, Laguna Woods, uh, and so he's Mr. Mejia is really engaged with him because this guy is want some recognition, I guess. And so uh, we had our meeting, and we're going to have our, our next meeting on, uh, um, let's see here, on February. No, I'm not paying attention. On March 8th, 16th will be, and again, I'm not, to save time and money, we don't do, I don't try to do MNC. Uh, and uh, if there's no request for alterations, I feel free to not use staff time and all that. That's all I have for that. Yeah, can staff change the name for the director to Liberatory for, for um, item 16B? Because it shows Director Blackwell for architectural. Right. I was so. never chair up there. Oh, you were never chair? Up there. No. Okay. I, I, I was filling chair for Razor. A couple uh, okay. of years. That's why. Okay. Next is uh, member hearings committee. Director Lee. Um, we had a membership hearing committee on February 9th, and our next meeting is on March 9th at 9 a.m. And uh, our new director Allison Park joined us, and it was great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next is governing documents. Director Blackwell. Thank you. We had a good meeting. We talked about, uh, Pam Bashline talked about loans in United Laguna Woods, and we also discussed that and the possibility of loans or not. And she made a package for us of a staff report, and we sent the staff report and the understanding resale packages booklets, a copy of each, to go to all the new ad hoc members in the finance committee who will be making uh, recommendations on loans. This, this does their background homework for them. They don't have to look it up. So that worked out well. And uh, we have some ongoing things that will be coming up next. Uh, cl clutter policy and governing personal items in common areas. We've, we've got that up on the next schedule and we've got another one on, I forget what it is, another one, a good one. I'll email you, I forget what it is. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, report of the Landscape Committee, Director Casey. 
Uh, yeah, we had a, a very good meeting um, on uh, January 23rd, and um, we had a presentation by uh, Urban Forest, um, who is doing a study. It was a absolutely fabulous presentation, so you can watch it. You know, it's it's available online or. And uh, we also um, have a uh, a turf reduction project that um, I'm going to be going on with the advisors and whoever else wants, uh, Maggie wants to go. <laughs> but, but it's just looking at uh, um, designated spots that uh, are recommended to be removed that are you know not really providing uh, useful. It's part of the water conservation project. That's right. And so we select uh, the which spots we want to choose. They have a list, and we take some some of those spots and, and visit them. Yeah, we're going to take a look and give our seal yeah. of approval. And uh, so our next meeting is going to be February 27th at 1:30. Yeah, I think there was um, there was about 30 different properties that were brought up that have very little lawns out in front of them. And it's better to take them out, and 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 because it saves on water. Yeah, put a and, replacement. And put or put low, low tolerant plants in there, or, and yeah. and that that makes a lot of sense. And Anne and Mary made a map. <laughs> yeah. And they're going to drive us around. <laughs> That's very good. Okay. Um, G is report of the Un United Resident Advisory Committee, Director Liberatory. Thank you. This committee is. Thank you. I'm sorry. This committee is really important, and uh, my predecessor, uh, Director Lee, brought it out of this venue and took it over to the Elm Room. We set the room up with tables, and so it's a very close environment. There's no structure, and people can come and just uh, tell us their issues, their problems, their concerns, and they don't have to worry about formal structure. And because of that, we, we, we don't want to share those things. We don't want to expose those people. And uh, our next meeting will be on March 9th. Okay. Lenny, you skipped that. Did I skip one? Oh, I did. It's a maintenance and construction. So uh, the main, main item at the last meeting was passing the Shepherd's Crook. Mm -hmm. And it's something that uh, we're going to be doing. We just voted on it. We're going to be doing it on El, along El Toro, but part of our budget um, coming up, we may want to look at expanding that program for next year um, to to at least cover the major um, roads that are exposed. So, but uh, it was very good that we passed that because that started as a by a letter by one of our residents, and he was concerned on behalf of his neighbors too that there's. There's, uh, there's various people getting into our community in that area, so th that, will be, um, that will be taken care of later this year. And the next meeting for that is February 22nd. Thank you, Diane. And then next one is the, let's see, that's 15, where are we at? Are we done with, G well, okay, now we're GRF. GRF Finance, Director Ascari. 817A. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, yes, GRF has a meeting on December 21st, 2022, and the main things in the whole meeting was um, the chair of the committee invited Sage View to give in their view information about what about the investment, and um, and he. Even even Sage View, I personally ask, is this the loss? Is real loss or paper loss? As some people says, and say, and he said, lost is lost. That money is lost. And again, he mentioned that yes, the bond funds is opposite with the interest. He confirmed that we know, but he is um, hoping that uh, basically this committee waiting and still they are not changing investment from bond funds. Um, I personally don't know why, but um, what I am asking residents that tomorrow we have a GRF meeting finance. Uh, 
And if you have any comment, concern regarding to this matter, is a huge uh, um, amount of, uh, their, their investment amount is more than us. Um, is, uh, it started at 19 million, but it's going down. Um, so it is a concern that why, um, why there is no action and it still is keep going. As far as everybody knows, that Fed again around, uh, announced that the interest rate is going to go up again. You know, I want to check with the attorney today because I don't think we should interfere with GRF. I mean, that we're going and petitioning and doing all this stuff. And Did you recognize, you just said that yeah, you have to get recognized. I was speaking. Did you ask yeah. and you just jumped in and talked? I did. I raised my talk. hand. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, now go ahead. He, 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 I raised my okay, hand and gave me that little. Now go ahead. <laughs> so anyway, uh, are we supposed to be interfering with another corporation and going and protesting and doing all that kind of stuff? That's what I want to ask the attorney today. So well, let me let me speak Mr. to President, that. Let me, I, let me okay. speak to that because um, well, let's talk about building E, for no, example. It's about let, investment. Let, let me talk about building E, uh -huh. for example. Um, when building E, which is a GRF project, mm -hmm. was voted against I call by, by the board for the agenda. Wait, wait, so I'm just, I'm not explaining something to Diane. I call for the agenda. Orders of the day. Well, so, uh, anyway, when we, we can went talk about through, it later. Okay, we'll talk about it later. Uh, Mary, would you do you have something to say? Mary, do you have something to say? Yeah, I, I was just going to say something also, but I think that um, Maggie is saying uh, to stay with the agenda, so that's fine. All right, all right. We'll, we'll talk about it in closed session. So uh, that the comment out of agenda should not be said. Now something comes and resident here and they don't receive any response. All right, that's not all right. fair. That's enough. That's enough. Okay. So we're at the GRF Strategic Planning Committee, Director Casey. Well, um, that was disbanded. <laughs> and uh, so um, I don't think oh. there is a meeting on uh, October 3rd. Um, I was at the GRF meeting and Debbie Dotson mentioned that it was disbanded at this this time. Okay. That committee is no more? Right. No? Yes. Okay. It's okay, so cross it out. GRF strategic planning no more. Okay. Community activities committee director Casey. Yes, so I don't know, as you might remember, I fell and broke my clavicle. I wasn't at that meeting. So uh, maybe Pearl, were you at the meeting for the CAC? No, I, you were I was. Right? You were. Maggie, if you could talk about <laughs> it. I was. Okay. Yes, we uh, heard from Mrs. G Giglio, and uh, she gave us everything that recreation does. We have never had a more complete report. Although it has been very complete before, it is even more complete now. Uh, we have uh, free movie events scheduled. Uh, we're changing the hours of the pools now, and we had some discussion about the pools. Um, w the Golf Greens Committee is, is working great, and we thank GRF for starting that committee up again a couple of years ago. Renovation Ad Hoc Committee... Uh, is talking about uh, Clubhouse One renovation, so that's still on the table. A printing press was offered for donation, and so we accepted that. Uh, let's see, we have a quilting machine for Clubhouse Four, and we're going to accept that donation so they can make beautiful quilts easily that way. And then we had a donation of a baby grand piano for Clubhouse 7, uh, which we looked into because it's, it's quite an old piano. And so we had an expert look at it, and we're going to not accept that donation because the refurbishment and tuning and et cetera, maintenance of that very old piano will be too much for us. Um, the whale project in Clubhouse will move from where it was here to Clubhouse 4 Lounge. 
And uh, let's see, that's, that's all we have. In the future, we'll talk about Performing Arts Center rental fees and some facility operating rules and things like that. So it was a good meeting. Thank you. We meet again uh, the February 9th, which was, which is last week. Which is no, last they canceled that one. That was canceled. Okay, the, so now the next okay, one. Okay, so that it's the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, GRF Landscape Director Casey. Okay, uh, so um, we just had a meeting, and, and it was a very good meeting, something you should watch too, because it talked about the storm and uh, different things that happened, and um, it was uh, a very good meeting. And the next one is, we, we only meet every other month, so we'll be in um, April. Okay, thank you. And the next one, GRF Maintenance and Construction, it's Mary Simon. But um, I think I was at that meeting, but I don't remember anything particular. Yeah. So, um, that one, yeah, that was in December, and the next one's in April 12th. But the ad hoc for Clubhouse One, we did meet, and um, the, the item that we discussed was um, when we met on January 24th, the following Monday, three or four members of the committee, plus a couple from staff, were going over to the um, design company to pick out colors and then they're coming back to us with the colors that they chose um, we we as a committee had selected colors but they were going out to finalize what they looked like in the showrooms to see that everything that we were just had discussed and decided on uh, was good and so they were com they're coming back to us and um, the next meeting is to be we haven't set the date yet. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Media and Communications, Director Blackwell. Okay. Okay. Um, we discussed the Communications Committee meeting charter. That's always good to do once a year so that everybody who was new on the committee knows. Uh, we had a good report. The What's Up in the Village is doing very well. And the breeze is well read. And the breeze can be reread and reread the entire month and maybe the month after. Uh, all the schedules and things are in the breeze. So if people ask you how to touch somebody or get somebody, uh, have them check through the breeze. They've got mostly just the phone numbers there, but they will get you in touch with almost anywhere. Um, the broadband ad hoc committee uh, is in working. Oh, I'll, I'll report on that next. If, okay, uh, website ad hoc. We're working on a better website. The That committee will be meeting on January 31st. Um, broadband services. Uh, let's talk tech. It's a very good show for people who don't know how to do all their computer and, and new gizmos. It really tells everything about it. Um, there will be... <coughs> Oh, we had a, a shortage of rain causing several outages at night during the power outage. Two technicians worked from 8 to 8, and they, they came out in the middle of the night to fix the electronic issues. And, uh, oh yes, and we did, we did put out a, I suggested we put out a how to use your fire extinguisher thing. So they sent me a little film vignette on how to do that. It's very easy, and I think that's that's been put on the Friday a message. So it's very easy. P A S S. If you have a fire extinguisher, very easy. Thank you. Well, uh, I think website would. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah there's like one and two under. Oh, sorry. That's Anthony. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mr. President. We, we canceled that meeting, and the next one is to be announced. Okay. Oh, yeah, I did want to talk about that one. So that is a very good meeting. And we're looking at a lot of options and, and things, you know, um, things are changing in uh, cable. You probably see it on the TV all the time with uh, all of these companies trying to sell you services. And uh, so we're looking at, at, you know, how is all this going to affect us? And so um, we're meeting with Eileen and Paul and um, members from all the different boards and going over our infrastructure and what's he what's heading down the road with cable and uh, also internet, um, that, you know, sp speed and so it's very interesting and we've, we've gone over the first option and now we're going to be heading into the second one and uh, that's going to be in the next meeting but it takes a lot of preparation for staff to get that all together. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the committee met on February 1st, 2023. It was very productive committee and uh, lots of questions raised by directors so that the resident assured that we are reading everything on behalf of you. Uh, first, um, in the committee, um, VMS staff uh, present three styles of transportation which is uh, the first one is a fixed route, which is by bus. And uh, please, I am asking resident use that one because some uh, member came and complained this bus is going around empty and wasting the money. So I hope resident start to using the buses more often. And number two is a Laguna Wood Village journey, which is curb to curb, especially for those uh, people that needs medical um, needs. And number three is boost, which is on demand and is partnership with uh, Lyft. So we have three style that residents can use. Also, um, there was a motion that was passed to, uh, for buying uh, two vans for 278,000 uh, and one fourth for 45,000. However, a motion comes to buy 10 fourth for 347,000 and the motion unanimously by all directors was tabled to bring more information because we couldn't find in the presentation enough information to pass. So the table was unanimous by all seven. The same uh, unanimous table was when the um, staff asked for two vans for 278. Again, information was not enough. Uh, so we ask for to table that one until information comes. Um, so in that case, the next uh, meeting, although it is April 5th, but be aware that we might have a special meeting if this information comes before that. Uh, and definitely I'll bring information for you as a summary. Thank you. I don't have that report in my file, do you? No. Okay. G uh, H, Security and Community Access. Yes, okay. The report is I. not okay. included Skip in it. the package. Okay, I. Well, they haven't met for some time. The next meeting is February 27th. Okay. Okay. Let's go to Laguna Woods Village Traffic Hearings. Director Akrakar. I'm sorry to say I didn't get any information on the packet, so I don't have. That's not going to be displayed in the packet because it's a, it's close, it's kind of like a closed matter. You right, don't right. Talk about each case, you know. Okay. So. Just announce this next. Okay. The next meeting. is report of the disaster preparedness task force, Director Libertor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this this committee is kind of like. Uh, Overlook, but they're the ones that we used to have prepared for the worst and hope for the best. And this committee is really involved in making sure that when the big one comes or the fire comes, that people will be attended to and we'll have foodstuffs. It's really a good committee and something that when the bad one comes, these people will have us prepared. 
And uh, our next meeting on this disaster preparedness is on March 28th, and it's it's well <laughs> to attend one of them just to get you tuned in to what can happen or what you should do if we have something really bad happen. One of these senseless agents of change. Thank you. So is there, um, on, on that, just real brief, is there, um, is there something that we could be presenting to our residents on what happens if there's a big earthquake? I, 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 I think that would be a really worthwhile endeavor because we're doing the planning as the committee, but I don't think the residents, I don't think we're communicating to them. Uh, yeah. okay. but, the, but this committee is working at it, but if something happens, what do I do? You know? right. Right. Okay. Um, information technology, Director Casey. Yeah, so we met in January, um, probably two weeks ago, and uh, got an update from the consulting team, which was very informative uh, on the progress they're making, going over each module and things that they're going to, that they need to get finished and, and, and all the, um, you know, the involvement of the staff. You know, they have had like 90 meetings and um, Chuck and uh, Director Hopkins and Director uh, Carpenter you know, add so much to the process. So it's a very good meeting, and I'm, you know, it's to be announced, so it's like every couple of weeks. Okay. And uh, last is compliance ad hoc, Director Blackwell. Yes, uh, we had a very good meeting uh, January 27th. Uh, GRF will create their own anti harassment hearing board for anything that happens on GRF property. The hearing board will address incidents on GRF property and it will be defined where is GRF property. Um, they will have their own executive hearings committee and they will create a resolution and charter for the executive hearings committee and there will be three directors plus one alternative it, they will set up their own disciplinary process and the, they will set s schedule of monetary penalties to include these behaviors or disturbances, assault, theft, trespassing, yelling, fighting, whatever, under harassment, abuse, intimidation, restrictions, which often happen in... in clubhouses outside and on the golf course. So those will be handled, and when you're off on GRF property, be a good person because we will have hearings, and they do have a plan. They will include the appeal policy, the nuisance policy, harassment, disciplinary violations, a schedule of monetary penalties, and executive hearings and rules. And we will meet again uh, February 17th which is not too far away. Okay, thank you. We're going to recess at this point. Can I just make one point? Yeah, sure. Because Siobhan will need to. Sure. It does say on this schedule, I think, that it was, there's an insurance ad hoc but that was canceled. Yeah. So we can't get to that. Yeah, uh, the insurance ad hoc is no more. Oh, That's got to be canceled. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're going to recess and... Uh, start our closed session, try to start it around 1.45. So this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>